Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Weathersfield Planning and Zoning Commission meeting of October 3rd, 2017. Would the clerk help me with roll call, please? Uh, Chairman Harley. I am here. Vice Chairman Margiata. Uh, clerk, I'm here. Mr. Hughes. Nope. Mr. Reichel. Here. Mr. Hammer. Here. Mr. Homicki. Here. Mr. Dean. Mr. Allard. Mr. Edwards. Here. Ms. Antoniak. Nope. Mr. Silver. Here. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. There are seven of us present, and uh, hopefully Tom will join us and make it eight. Um, just for the record, you do need five positive votes to to get um, to get something approved. All right. Uh, just in case Tom doesn't show up. For those in the public, the way this works, will <clears throat> the primary thing that we're going to hear tonight is a public hearing. The way public hearings work is that we will have the applicant explain what it is they propose to do. The commission will question the applicant get as much information as we can on the table, then we'll turn to the public and, and request input from the public, uh, and then follow up with the applicant. The commission will follow up with the applicant, and uh, if we are satisfied with the information that we've uh, heard tonight, we can uh, take a motion to close a hearing and move on to deliberate on the application itself. If not, we would probably leave the hearing open and move it on to another evening so that the applicant can come back with more information. That's the general process, okay? So the first things first, the commission will deal with the applicant and then we'll invite the public to participate. So with that, uh, the first item on the agenda, 3.1, a public hearing, application 1958-17Z, CCC construction, uh, Frank DeBacco seeking a special permit and resubdivision to modify the application 1884-15Z on back lane. Welcome, Frank. Uh, would you take a few minutes and explain what's going on? Um, yep. Um, I, I wrote a letter to Peter Gillespie. Uh, I don't know if you had a chance to review that. Um, and in that was the, the modifications that we are requesting um, to allow us more time to further in, in pursue the, uh, the piece of property that is in question. Um, so the, there are two waivers that we're requesting. One is a waiver for the standard right of way for the geometry along the, the sides of uh, Luca Lane to allow for a uh, geometric modification to the right of way limit shown on the original plan that we've submitted back about a year and a half, two years ago. And the other one is a, another waiver <clears throat> um, potentially for a sidewalk cross sections um, to have a lower uh, I guess, as Derek provided, a positive pitch towards the road. It would be a negative pitch away from the road. Um, so the sidewalk would be slightly lower than the curb. So the, the water runoff from the curb and the five foot or four foot grass wouldn't go into the street, it would go into the property. Um, and these are both worst case scenarios. Um, so as part of this letter, it describes the circumstances and how we got to where we are. Um, and it also gives a brief explanation of what we are trying to do uh, or what I am trying to do to, to pursue it, to, to put it back to the way it needs to be for the original intentions. Um, so uh, with that, I can explain to you what we're doing here. Um, we've modified the plans a little bit uh, to the benefit, uh, as we discussed with Peter, um, and, we've sat, and I've taken one of the lots off of the subdivision at the moment until I can officially acquire uh, the other piece in the back as we try to exercise that option to purchase in April of 2016 and uh, their financial circumstances have drastically changed where now we need to resolve it with a third party. Um, so we're in the mix of that as well. And those never go very quickly. They take a lot of time. Um, so with that, uh, we have sold one lot already to the Volanos who are sitting in front of you who are eagerly looking to move into town. and. Uh, the Kisses who live in town, another couple that have another home and looking to relocate here. Uh, and they've been waiting almost a year uh, for us to resolve all these issues. So uh, in talking with Peter, um, I think we've come up with a solution to try to resolve those issues uh, on a worst case scenario um, that I will walk you through. Um, 
and then take any and all questions as we go through it. I guess that would be the, the simplest way to answer what we're looking for today. Yeah. I think that's the right way to do it. Walk us through the changes on the plan. Okay. Um, so you want me to start with what the, the original memo that Derek sent? Because I really haven't incorporated everything he sent this evening at 6, but I can try to attempt to resolve those questions as well. You know, my, <clears throat> my own questions uh, would be um, addressed by you describing on the plans where you're moving the road temporarily, point, yep. out, point out the problem area. Okay. And, and even as I look at this cross section, it, which way you're looking so that the panel members understand. Okay, so okay. I will describe the two variances and then I will go through and answer the original memo dated of September 26th item by item. brought the original plan here so you knew what it was what we were discussing and I'll point it out to you this is the property on back lane 312 this triangular piece is the portion that we are trying to acquire um, when we did this acquisition as part of the committee requirements where we had to show proof that we had these parcels under an agreement to buy for our approvals um, so we always brought in the amendments there was no hiding no secrets the options were there if we executed we would buy them um, so those have always been public record and they've been filed and recorded at the town hall. We got an extension for this parcel that we have also filed and recorded in town hall, giving us another year with an option, I believe, for another year renewal to acquire the property and dealing with their endeavors to get this put together. And with that said, so this is the triangular piece that is of issue. The road has been constructed all the way up to here, all the way down to here, all the curb is in, and the seating has been established and done on this side of the property. Um, now with that, the issue comes up when we turn this page backwards. What's in green is the actual curb line that we've built. And everything in the middle of the road is all done, paved, ready to go. The, what's in pink is what Peter Gillespie and I believe Derek got involved with as a possible solution um, for the potential right of way uh, to be 10 feet extended on either side of the curb line. Um, so I believe it was Derek who mentioned just laterally moving the lines up so we extended the road to give it 10 feet on either side so here is two and a half feet on this side is 18 feet to equal the total dimension of the road until the parcel can be acquired back here and then we can revert back so you're putting more black top on the on the we west are west side of we're not moving any black top we're not moving any curbing Okay. We're giving you more lawn area on one side of the road versus the other. Okay, so the curb will still end up very close to the property line. Yes. So You're just moving the right-of-way. We're moving the, the imaginary right-of-way lines. Not the pavement. Not the pavement. So it would be the right-of-way lines that would be needed. And God forbid, if you ever had to modify this road in this location, there are severe issues with traffic patterns because this is at a, at a radius that's at the minimum requirements sorry, the maximum requirements for, for speeding. So it's 35, 40 mile an hour zone, can't get any tighter. Um, and when you look at it in the overall scheme, you'd be coming down here and that's this little piece area here before the intersection. So I don't know why, but it's the crazy things I've seen happen, what the purpose would ever be required to extend or widen that road at that intersection to serve as two, four, six, seven, eight homes, do we need a road wider than 30 feet? Would be the question that we really need to think about at some point in time. Um, Derek did mention that this, the right of ways were designated typically for services, for the road improvements, and also for locations of snow. Um, so looking at it with my own experiences when I used to plow snow as I was younger, you come down with a truck this way and you have the angle of the plow once you get to the radius of the plow, it comes almost perpendicular to the, to the curb. The snow is going left off of the truck. It's not going to go right typically any further because you're coming along the radius and it wants to go this way by the, the forces that are being applied to it. So they're going to come back down and push it all over on this side. So there's, there isn't going to be a tremendous amount of snow here uh, until you get back to the straightaway and then it goes right back to where it needs to go regardless. Um, so that was the biggest waiver that I thought of that was needed was for this curb and the potential for the services 
for the asphalt and the grass. So, so there's something that's still confusing me when I, when I hear that description. <clears throat> How are you moving the right-of-way? Um, you're not moving the right-of-way along 312 and 326. That's somebody else's right-of-way line, too. What you're telling me is that you're moving the right-of-way along lots two, right? Lot two. Because one kind of goes away for the time being. And, one, and lot two and lot 20. And 20. And, and so from the back corner points, arguably, of 312 and 20. 20. And 326, <coughs> you're going to bend those right-of-way lines. We're going to okay. just shift them north and south uh, okay. 90 degrees from the road, okay. hypothetically. To allow the max to still give you your 20 feet. To give us the 20 feet or well, the 50 foot 50 right away, 20 right feet away. of grass on either side of the shelf. Right. And lot one disappears. Lot one temporarily disappears. Correct. Oh, so if this gets resolved, then I come back. back in front of you with lot one. And do you bother changing the right away line on 20? If, if and if if and when I shouldn't say if when the day comes and I acquire my parcel. I intend to come back in front of this committee for reapproval of what was originally submitted and built as. And if you've sold 20 at that point? I won't. I, I'm 20, I can't, so I won't sell in lot two, I won't sell. I could still sell them if I choose to, but for me financially, it's not something I'm willing to gamble with. I, I will end up with the home or somehow that parcel on the back. And as that letter states, we have already put an offer on that house. But it's got to go through. The proper channels because of the conditions of the homeowner that's in. Okay, so once again, what's this what's the smallest dimension between the curb line that you've installed on the north side right there at Luca? Plus and, or minus two feet six inches from here to here. Okay. Thank you. Other people's questions? You can walk that. I fit all the power for that subdivision in that little right away. <clears throat> And I even have photos of it too, if you need to see it, what it looks like. It all looks the the right away there? all the utilities that service this for telephone, power, and cable are in that sliver of property. Really, on that side? On that side, it all of fits. Of course, because it's the short side. <laughs> and so, Derek, with one of his requirements in the past, was to make sure that it was everything was off of the other property. So we had to shift uh, two conduit six inches off of that corner. So we dug up the 40 feet, moved the pipe out. CLNP came out to inspect it. Now we've got to redraw all the easements with them. Did you have any other property requirements as Luca hits, excuse me, as, as it hits <coughs> the back lane and you have the, cur the returns on the right-of-way line? Everything in the entrance and everything past this point is unaffected. Uh, Stella Drive is unaffected. Uh, Vinny Drive is unaffected. It's just this small section of Luca lane. The, the, the right-of-way that pre-existed this whole proposal had the curb returns that you needed up. So it's not really the curb returns, it's a right of way radius up those corners. Yep. That all exi that's all, that's all existing, that's all good. None of that has been affected by what's happening back here. Okay. I have a comment here. When I look at this the second time around, I've never seen so many utility rights of way in this subdivision. It's wonder if you're getting lots in here. Thank God the lots are big enough to accommodate them. It's, it's, and get a house on them, too. It's a, it's, a, it's a difficult parcel. It always has been. Um, and, I, and Nobody ever wanted to touch it in over 25 years, and here I am. That's and I'm dealing with it very aggressively. <laughs> okay, so why don't we move on to the second issue. That was the right-of-way issue, right? That one requires a waiver of the process. Right? Yep. And the other one is a sidewalk. I, I will start by using this plan and then go to one in, in, the, in the previous where I highlighted it. So the sidewalk originally was supposed to be to the north, uh, adjacent to 312. Um, the surveyor put in that that we would have rights to the sloping requirements to do a section of the property here. I never noticed it. Um, I don't have those rights to grade it at this point in time. I only have the rights to purchase it in the back. Uh, one of other Derek's concerns was the sidewalk is going to be now, if I left it on the north side of the property, would be encumbering on a piece of property that I don't currently own, and therefore I can't install the sidewalk, and I'm in violation of that regulation. Um, so with that, Peter pointed out to us, well, why can't we just go to the south side? Um, with going to the south side, I will flip the page and I'll show you what we're doing there if we had to. Um, and that would move the sidewalk from here. We would have to extend this part on back lane because the radius disappears. We would have to put another handicap ramp here, 
come along House 326, all the way back this way, and across the street here onto the other side. Go to the next side and all the way back here. On the future development in the back parcel, we would come across this way, cross the reservoir lane, and then come back to the sidewalk on the top and then reconnect up here and then back over the back lane. So we would cross three intersections potentially with pedestrians, which was not our original intent. Right, we, we talked about that during the original proposal. Right, um, with that, there's a little sliver back here that the town would have to be shoveling every winter along with what they're mowing already because now the sidewalk is on what they wanted for access to get into the reservoir. Um, if we had to do that, if the town wanted to remove that right of way and then split it back to lots 15 and 16, so be it, we can take it back and then the town has no responsibility there if we need to. We move the lights across the street, theoretically in design, so that yeah, if we had what, to. What did you say that right away was when I saw it? I, I yeah, that right is. Uh, uh, yeah, Peter wanted a. Uh, the one that goes right, right all through the way down to the. And yep. the town wanted that or it was already there? No, the town asked for it so that they could have pedestrians go into the wetlands oh, if they so wanted to. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that they have three points of entry into that four acre parcel versus the two from either side of the road. Okay. So it's just a path that will never be installed, never be built. It'll be a field that never mowed, no trees ever cut, but it's an imaginary line that just goes through the woods. Thank you. Okay. Um, so that way we had the sidewalks go there, the lights moved across the street, parallel from where they were on the opposite side. <coughs> and that's the other waiver that we're looking for at the moment. Now this is all contingent upon me not acquiring 312. Okay, so <clears throat> I, when I was reading um, a Derek's, the town engineer's memo, uh, and he was suggesting certain things, uh, I wasn't clear whether the regulations require that we as a body, three quarters of us have to approve, is it a waiver? Because the way the, the way the memo was written, it sounded like we were changing standards and, and maybe we're just giving basically a waiver of the standards for this site specific. In your regulations, it's referred to as a waiver or a modification uh, to the subdivision standards. So you can use either, either terminology, but it does require a three quarters vote. And uh, since you're down a few members, uh, by my accounting, um, you may need everybody to approve it in order for it to be processed. Have you ever done a subdivision well, yeah. quite, well, quite, quite. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's it's a standard. It's in the statutes. You're allowed. You're allowed to do that. There's specific provisions um, that allow you to do that as long as your regulations uh, authorize it, and your regulations do have a section that authorizes it. I so. never remember doing it. That's well, we usually do it for sidewalks if we do it for anything. Yeah, because you require it on both sides. You waive it for. I think you you waived it in this earlier subdivision application yeah, to allow it on one side. One sidewalk instead of two, we're waiving. Yeah. But certainly w what he's asking for is uh, is not a standard request because of the complications uh, with the acquisition of the property. So I don't, I can't say that you've granted a modification for something like this. Right, of the technical right. nature of yeah. <clears throat> So doing the math, we do have nine bodies, right? So just follow that thought <laughs> process out, right? We have nine regular bodies, so three quarters of that. Seven would be seven, right? So seven out of the eight of us have to approve it? Is that what we got? One, two, three, four. Yeah, we got our set, we got eight. our eight. Well, it's three quarters of the whole commission, regardless of right. whether we're here or not. No, that's, so my right. point is that we need seven. Yes. And there are eight of us here, right? Right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I, I just, I happen to be reading the reg that Peter had, and uh, I guess just a couple things. You know, there's other language in the waiver regulation that says, you know, it applies in cases where conditions exist which affect the subject land and are not generally applicable to other land in the area, and that provided that public health and safety are not adversely affected and um, no significant adverse effect on adjacent property. The waiver is not for the purpose of creating additional building lots. Um, will not result in any impacts on public health or safety, will not conflict with the plan of conservation and development, and when it's proposed to vary any engineering standard contained in the regulations, a report from the town engineer has been requested and considered by the uh, commission. Can I just add for the sidewalk, we're only looking for a small section on that waiver, and it would only be 
about 30, 40 feet long. The rest of it would all be correctly done. What so just, What are you going to do with that 30 or 40 feet? Just put it on the other side of the road or not do it at all? No, it would, instead of being an inch or two above the curb so that it sheds towards the road, it's going to be lower than the curb. So the water from the curb now goes back instead of to the gutter line. Yeah, just the reverse of that, yep. So Rich, to maybe further answer your question, we hope he does nothing on that side of the street and that he can acquire 312 and get the rights and put it back on the other side of the street. So this is, as far as we're concerned, hopefully a stopgap approval and he'll come back uh, in the future um, to do it the way we had originally intended it. So that's our hope anyway, but, un, uh, so we're, but we're also viewing this as a potentially permanent. Right. But yeah, that's the point. Yeah, because right. I mean, it's, it's outside of his control or our control. Right. But I think we have to look at it as a permanent yes, change. Yes, I mean, you that's do. That's why we're, we're looking at it. But as Derek wrote in his memo, we don't want to build the sidewalk until we're forced to at the very end of the subdivision. Because if I can still acquire it, if it takes me longer than six months, a year, a year and a half, I still want to go back to the other way. So I don't want to construct any of this until the very end, and I have no choice by town regulations, and I have to put it in. Otherwise, it's my goal to go back and get my lot one. Yeah, I mean, obviously, lot one is valuable. It's, it's, it is valuable, and yeah. it's an oversized lot two that I can't, at the moment, put on the market because then I lose lot one. Could you so there's a huge financial incentive for me to, yeah. to finish off and acquire 312. Could, could you explain just a little bit more what you think the timing is with the people you're trying to acquire from and exactly what process you have to go through to make that happen? Okay. Um, we started uh, the process to try to purchase it back in April of 2016. I believe, Peter, I sent you that memo for the option that we exercised once we got approval to close on that parcel. You have that in file. Uh, didn't I remember? Did I, did I give you that copy that we tried to close? Was that the P that Potentially, I'm, I'm not sure. So we've been trying to, to capture this piece since April of 2016. Um, we finally got to the point as of uh, one or two weeks ago where the homeowner has agreed to enter into a contract for us to buy the property under a short sale. Um, it has gone into the systems and it goes through a program because their financial institution is out of Texas uh, so it's got to go into a system called the equator. I've never dealt with it before. I don't know anything about it. We're learning as we go. And I see Rod Richard doesn't really like that system. But we are forced to go that way. Uh, so there is now an arbitrator in the middle uh, between myself, the homeowner, and the bank. Um, so now there's a fourth person in the middle. Uh, to further complicate it, uh, there are additional liens on the property that need to be resolved. Um, and negotiations need to take place. Uh, the mortgage on the home is on the wrong side of the value of the home. Um, talking with the equator, um, it can take six months to nine months to get a response back from the lien holders and the bank <coughs> and negotiate from there uh, on who's going to get what pennies on the dollar. Um, so for me to give you an, ex an exact timetable of when we're going to be done, I don't know. Um, I do know that the owner is, is, does want to sell the property, is willing to do whatever he can to sell the property. He has executed another extension on the option agreement and has offered to do another if we need to. Um, he is looking for us to, I guess, help him get out from where he is um, and get him on the right side of, of, of the circumstances, uh, of which we're trying to do. Um, so he's eager to sell. Has a foreclosure action been brought on his property? Yes. Oh. <laughs> so, I mean, I guess at the end of the day, if the bank just goes ahead and forecloses, then there's no guarantee they're going to do anything with our applicant here, right? If the bank um, forecloses and puts the home on the market, then I have to buy it that way. Right. Yeah. But we have the option on the parcel, so we are somewhat protected. They have to do eventually deal with us, and they know that we want to acquire the property. We have... The homeowner has assigned me a third-party resolution where I can talk directly with the bank. But, so from what I gather, you couldn't even buy it at a short sale from the bank because there are other liens on the property. Um, 
I can't buy it on the short sale until everybody agrees. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six. But even if you do, then you have the other liens on the property, yeah. which have to right. be. Right. Yeah, yeah, everybody has to agree. Gonna, yeah, that's. Everybody's got to agree on it. Uh, there's the six lien holders and the banking institution. <laughs> It's a complicated so it, mess. It, it is. It is complicated. Everybody is is talking. Everybody's willing to do something because they want to get something out of it. Because ultimately, mm -hmm. if the bank forecloses, the lien holders get nothing. Mm -hmm. you should buy so the they're out. And foreclose it yourself. That's on the table also. So <laughs> we have we have offered that to the bank, and we're waiting for that response also. But again, all of these things have to go through this system called the Equator that I don't know anything about really, and I'm learning as I'm going, unfortunately, on the first one. Um, so we are waiting for a payout number. We put a short sale offer, um, and the last one was to buy the mortgage note and for us to foreclose. The homeowner is, is willing to do a friendly foreclosure if we can acquire the note. But, you know, Peter, from our regulations perspective, for him, to either sell the first lot or get a CO on the first house, doesn't the town need to have in hand fee title to the right of way? At some one of those points, I would assume. Um, I don't know about the sale of the building lots. Uh, once we were made aware of this complication, we um, held off on issuance of building permits, so it didn't get further complicated by having you know somebody in the middle of construction. Uh, so I, I can't really answer your question about the, but there was a there was some confusion on the title certificate that that was provided to the town attorney. So um, it's been, you know, a bit of a mess all the way through. I guess what I'm saying is, if he goes far enough along and he's got to give all rights to the road per the proposed revised plan, and this thing stretches out a long time, he could then potentially be coming back to us saying, now I want to re-transfer rights back and forth to put it back the way it was going to be originally and that could be after houses are built potentially and we already have uh, yeah, I, so so we're that happen, right? that's when that's why we're you know advising you to view this as a potential permanent solution and it needs to be it, you, if you look at Derek's memo it, it has uh, I don't know six or seven uh, conditions suggested which includes you know revised you know title uh, information revised deeds uh, and then also some plan changes so um, that's why we would be doing a, you know, more traditional conditional approval with all of that stuff covered and it still has to be addressed to the satisfaction of the town attorney. But if, so I can, it is confusing. I wasn't here for the year on the commission when this first came through, so it's a little doubly difficult for me. But in the event that what you are talking about, the modification, would become applicable and permanent. Which lots, I'm a little confused, which lots would be affected by, by that? Because you're saying other houses are being built. You know, other houses are being built on there. So if we, we came back, how are the other houses built going to be affected by The that? houses that are proposed to be built on would not be affected by these changes. They're farther down, closer to back lane. That's what I thought, yeah. So, um, but nevertheless, if they kept going through construction, we couldn't accept the road because of this complication. We just didn't want to complicate it further by issuing building permits and letting that get so far down the road that, you know, the horse is already sort of out of the barn, but we don't want it running, running into the next field, so. So, so the lots, <coughs> just remind us of the phases, and are you selling lots in phase two or just phase one? It's just lot one is all I'm dealing with. Phase two is not open, it's not paved. Phase two is between lot one and lot two, the line comes across this way. So this would be phase two in here, and this is phase one. So in phase one, as the other gentleman mentioned, I, I, I took lot one, merged it with lot two, so this one temporarily goes away. Yep. And then the ones that are in sale are lot 17 and lot 19, and they have no, nothing's gonna change for them back here no matter what happens up here. And, and did we require you to finish phase one before phase two? Is there, in other words, as we talk about permanency, can we be saying it's permanent, but there's only going to be four houses on it ever because you don't get to phase two unless it's. it's I think we bonded it in phases, but I don't know right. if we did it that. Right. We did bond it in phase one. I think it's 1.4 million that I put up. Well, so 
is <clears throat> is it acceptable for us to say you know we could head down this path but but you're not selling anything in phase two till this is resolved satisfactorily the way it was originally done he'd have to come back in for bonding for to do the work on but yeah i guess legally he could theoretically well i, I don't know about the question of selling lots in phase two so i, I i'd rather not okay but well, i mean if we grant this i think I think we're just at least potentially saying the right of way is going to be shifted to the south from where it is shown originally. Lot one goes away, lot 20 gets slightly smaller, you know, and, and one piece of the sidewalk, if it's built at all, is going to be built contrary to our regulations, but everything else so, stays the same. So. So then maybe let me rephrase because where I'm heading here is, you know, how do, how do we limit if it had to get built? And, and I don't think anybody here wants it to be built that way. Um, how, how do we make the whole process stop um, at, at a future point? Because obviously what we're talking about, or at least I, th I think what we're talking about here is the developers going, has sold one or two lots and potentially there might be another couple that could sell in these early stages and and when do we take the road possession of the road when do we need in the process for him to say I built I have to build the sidewalk so that I can turn the road over to the town and that has to happen before the before the buyers can have a CO it's that that I'm asking okay so, so um, just going back to the beginning part of your question how do we continue to keep our hands in this as it goes forward. Yep. Uh, in Derek's memo, uh, condition number one, he's suggesting that this approval be granted for a year so that it can be revisited at that point in time to just see what's what's uh, progressed. Um, the answer to your question about accepting the road, obviously the road acceptance is um, uh, after m most of the homes are built. I think you have an 80% rule that 80% uh, of the lots have to be developed in order for the road to be um, approved in your subdivision regulations so there are some mechanisms in place that you know the acceptance won't come until farther down the road so um, there are there are situations where people can get COs and the road is still in private hands and it's the developers responsibility to continue to maintain that road and remove the snow and all that stuff uh, until such time as the town accepts it I don't know if that gives you enough so I so I, I think what I gathered from that is that <clears throat> uh, the way the basic rules are is this could easily continue for some time, selling more and more lots into phase two and potentially phase three without us ever having to officially accept the road and make sure that that sidewalk is built in a less than desirable location and fashion. Right? Um, if the developer wanted to keep maintaining it. but. But it still comes down to, you know, we, we need to be able to accept it as a potential permanency. I'm just trying to put an end, you know, yeah, uh, yes, I can accept it as a permanency, but only if you're, you know, only if it's never going to be more than five lots. And I don't know, if, I don't know if that thought process is right or not. You still end up with a with a less than desirable <coughs> sidewalk location and, and geometry, whether it's five lots or 25 lots. Um, I, I'm just trying to wrap my arms mm -hmm. around. I guess how do you control it? I mean, slight, somewhat related to that, I guess I'd just like to understand for purposes of evaluating the waiver. If you didn't get the waiver and you didn't have lot 312 and you needed to conform to our regulations in the two respects that you're seeking waivers on, what would the effect of that be? Would it mean you literally couldn't do it or that you'd lose? two lots in the process of trying to do it what's the ramification without the waiver without the waiver um, looking up and I see the homeowner for 326 she will never give me grading rights to get onto her property she does not want a sidewalk so I can't get a sidewalk on that side um, how are you <laughs> so I know I can't go that way um, uh, without her consent to make that regulation work exactly to try to shift the road um, tear it up and move it um, so that we can move it eight feet uh, can be done uh, there was a design that showed that 
um, and it would basically, uh, when I did that, um, from here it shifted out a little bit out this way, reduced lot 20, and then eventually came back in the conformance based on lot 16. And then I lose lot one completely. So you, so you bowed it out farther to get around that corner? We, we came down and just so pushed it So you can put way. the sidewalk on that side. The sidewalk would go on the side place. that nobody wants it to go on. And knowing the family on the other side, they, they're not willing to, to help on that situation. You would bow it out so that you could put it back on the 312 side? We bowed it. Where it was designed. The sidewalk would never fit. Uh, would it fit there? Well, if it doesn't, then... We'll I mean, it would have to. It would have Yes, I, I, yeah, right? I could potentially go back to 312. Uh, no, actually, I can't because Derek informed me I don't have the grading rights to 312. So I can't go that way either. So I and I can't put any retaining walls. You don't think you could build it? Um, I can build it with a waiver on the sidewalk. Right. It's going to come down, no matter what it's coming down to, is I need a waiver on a sidewalk for, call it 50 feet, 30 feet. I'm going to need some kind of variance on that area either on the left or the right side, north or south. Okay. okay. Um, thoughts? Um, we haven't really talked about Derek's uh, concept of how or what we should Excuse consider me. in terms of constraints on this if we were to move forward. We could, we could walk through that. Um, are the constraints in this updated memo? Yes. Yeah, and he probably revised it to updated thoughts. Okay. Or we can go to the public and hear their yeah. comments before. Hear from the public. I have just one question because I'm a bit confused with regards to the sidewalk way. Yep. Um, basically, you, you want to uh, have a portion of your amended sidewalk, you know, the, the proposed sidewalk. Uh, to be below, uh, you know, below grade of a certain kind. What does that do to <coughs> run off, freeze thaw cycle of, of moisture, water on the sidewalk during particularly winter time, that sort of thing, risk of uh, ice buildup on the sidewalk during winter, um, public safety issues pertaining to that? I don't see any public safety issues. Uh, Sidewalks that are lower than the curb line I've seen here in town and other locations. I know there's one right by the dentistry shop right in the, on Walls Road. Uh, that little plaza there, there's a sidewalk that's like eight inches lower than the curb. Um, the sidewalks are designed to have a 2% pitch on the cross of the four foot so that water doesn't puddle, it sheds off. Uh, typically that sheds towards the curb itself so the water in the town right away goes into the gutter of the road and then into the storm drainage. If it's lower than the curb, the water from the curb line in its current condition is, is the way it's going to be as it is today. Today, from the curb, the water drains towards 326 on her home. The difference is I'm just going to carve in a sidewalk, and the water's still going to drain to her home on 326. The difference is at four feet, there's grass, and then another four feet, there's a sidewalk, and then it's back to the grass. So the water still flows in the same direction. The difference is it's not going to go to the gutter line, it's going to go as it is today with the lawn in place. So the water, the water's still going in the direction it's going. It's not being changed from its current construction. Is the flow going to increase from its current use? No. Yeah. No. Because from the from the curb line here, going this way, it's the grass. If I put a curb in the middle, the, the, the water's still going over the sidewalk. It's just not going to have a grass yeah. area. Arguably, the, the okay. curb line is stopping all flow from the road and anything that's east of it, right? So okay. the back of the curb is still flowing toward the property owner just like it does today, or I shouldn't say today as it did, that's you know, right. a year ago. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I suppose you could argue there should be less water coming to the property owner. Yeah, it's being intercepted. Because it's being intercepted, right? <clears throat> All right, you, you tend to think we should ask the public to join us? Okay. I do. Okay. I didn't respond to Derek's memos. You want me to do that after? Because he's got a lot of items on that. 
Well, why don't we go to the public and okay. look at his new memo because it's got less items than his old one. Yeah. The new memo I got at 6 o'clock I'm not totally prepared for. The old memo I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, a lot of those things aren't in the new one, so we don't need to hear about it. Correct. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, public, this is a kind of a raise your hand and come on up. If we can't get all the information first, um, does it make more sense to get all the information about the memo? I mean, I don't know how everybody else feels. I, I honestly don't have a problem with that. I was trying to make everybody sit through all the details if they didn't care to. Um, you know, we won't close the hearing. You could still talk afterwards. Oh, okay. All right. I guess I want to get a flavor for what's going on. Is there somebody who'd like to speak on the, you know, on the application? Come on up. Uh, identify yourself for the record, and then offer your comments. Uh, good evening. My name is Michael Villano. And I'm Stephanie Villano. We are the um, owners of Lot 17. We actually closed on the property in December of 2016. So we're here to speak in favor of these two variances because we're kind of landlocked right now. Um, we were hoping to have made a lot more progress on construction of our home and um, these two waivers I believe would allow us to start right away uh, and get our foundation in before another winter comes and goes um, so thank All you right. <laughs> thank you anybody else I just have some questions on. I'm Anna Maria Zacco I'm 326 back lane so I just want to understand you want to move the sidewalk on our side? Is that if so, you can't get 312? So, so generally speaking, I'm going to ask you to direct them to us, and I suspect okay. we can probably answer. The, so the, if he doesn't acquire the house in question, 312, he wants to move the sidewalk onto our side. He's, he's looking for approval from us to have the sidewalk on your side. Okay. Which would mean what for my property? Or is that still the town's? right of way it's still the town's right of way the sidewalk per se the five foot concrete sidewalk stays in the town's right of way would that be in the piece of i have three trees then there's a piece of now you're going way too, sp put in. <laughs> too specific for me but but we'll have him answer that for you so okay. describe the question one more time and let him so where you put that nice piece of grass there yes. is that where the sidewalk would, would go in place of that you're not going to come back on my property that's my meet, question in order to meet the cross sections regulations of the design the three trees are going to get cut right now i can ask for a waiver to move them closer to the road and have a little bit difference of a distance between the curb and the sidewalk and not affect them but that's something that Derek's Wait. going to have to approve so what are you saying that the trees themselves are in the right of way there's three bushes or three shrubs that are about uh, 10 12 feet tall four or five feet in diameter I maybe guess. six feet in diameter and they are in the and town right of way they're center of the property line so half on hers half in the town right of way gotcha um if we shift the sidewalk instead of having the four feet of grass move it closer to the curb to the curb i wouldn't affect the uh, the trees at all uh, but yeah but you can you can't have it sloping away and right next to the well, at least that's funky. Up against the curb and sloping away. I've seen them right <laughs> on the curb in some parts of town. I've seen them away from the curb. They're all over the place. Uh, yeah. Okay. I okay. just don't so, want my property to be affected. If it's the town's property, it's the right of way. That's fine. I just. So, so that's what we're all hearing. Right. Um, right. Um, and if he had to take off the trees and they're half on yours and half on the town property, he's going to be stepping on your property, and that's what he's trying to avoid. Thank you. Other questions or comments on the application? Not at the moment? Okay. Come on back and we'll continue this. So let's move on to Derek's, or maybe I should, why don't we just have Derek speak to the comments? Would he join us? Um, we haven't had the opportunity to read your most recent, so why don't, why don't you start there? Because um, that's the updated one. <laughs> yeah, sorry for the late submittal. We had just gotten the revised plans uh, yesterday afternoon, so I was trying to get the review done in time for tonight's meeting um, so you'd have a chance to uh, make a decision based on it. 
Um, just to just to clarify a few things that I've heard, so we're you know we're all on the same page here. Um, with regard to the sidewalk that will be located below the top of curb on the 326 back lane side of the road, um, that walk will extend across pretty much based on the plans that we had got across the whole uh, sideline of that property. So we're looking at more than 30 or 40 feet. It's probably uh, closer to uh, 100, 125 feet. Uh, just so you're aware of that, um, you know we've. Considered that in, in my memo, um, you know, I've stated it's non-standard, but um, in the effort to try and move the project along, hoping that it is just a temporary condition, we'd be willing to accept it um, as long as they maintained um, the slopes from the curb to the sidewalk uh, at a reasonable slope of four to one, which they're pretty close, they're a little less, but they're pretty close to doing. So um, it generally met my requirement. Um, just a couple other comments I wanted to uh, speak to too. With regard to your question about um, how it affects your property, um, just want you to be aware of the only other impact, it doesn't physically impact your property, but you would be responsible for clearing those walks if they front your property, um, which you currently don't have walks in front of your lot now, so that would be um, just something to be aware of. And then as far as how it drains, um, the, the shelf, whether or not it had a sidewalk, was to be a positive pitch to the curb per our standard detail. We always have positive grade from the right of way to the curb so snow melt or any other runoff comes to the road and gets into the drainage system not going out. Um, you know, that was how it was designed. During construction, I had noted in my memo, we raised the road a few, uh, you know, eight to 12 inches in that area to try and reduce the cut on the north side property on 312. Of course, by doing that now and coming back to move on the other side, we've created, now the road's higher so there's more of a more of a, a situation uh, as far as grading on that side. So, um, I mean, generally, yeah, there wouldn't be an increase in runoff, but the, you, know, the, you know, just from an engineer perspective, yeah, now you have concrete versus all grass. You can have a little bit more runoff draining down to 326, which appears to move to the west as it goes onto the property and into the wetlands in the back, but just so everyone's clear on that. Um, then with regard to the, the comments I just issued, um, as I said, we, you know, we, uh, it, by chance, came upon the information that um, Mr. DeBacco had not acquired all the land he needed for the right-of-way. Um, you know, had we known this earlier, I don't think we would have allowed him to start construction, but being that we are where we are, um, we're trying to be as reasonable as we can um, to try and help him move this forward so he can at least get some houses started and uh, we don't delay the project any further. Um, but I tried to outline in my memo our preference is um, to have them come back, reset the right of way the way it should be. Um, my preference would be to have the sidewalks on the north and west sides of the road um, for connectivity to the other walks to avoid, you know, multiple crossings within the subdivision. Um, for, uh, you know, to your point about public safety for snow melt, generally the north side and the, and the west side are best because it gets the most sunlight being that the sun is always south of us. Also, um, gets the morning sun if it's on the west side of the wall, on the street. If it tends to be on the east side, you tend to have more uh, houses or trees or those things that kind of shade it. It's not a set in stone, but as a, a preferable installation, I think the way they had it originally was best. Um, but as Peter said, assuming that we may have to live with this long term, you know, these comments were driven off the fact that if we have, if this does become a permanent situation out there, then these are, you know, the concerns we had or things we felt needed to be addressed if the commission was willing to move forward and improve it. Um, so I, I guess if you would you like me to go through comment about the comment as to what I had um, Why don't you you know go through the ones where you're, you're suggesting the way we craft Okay, that's kind of what you do you, you're suggesting a way to craft a way to move forward. That's All right, it, that's how you present it right. So, uh, you know given that mr. Debaco's contention this will be temporary uh, as we hope it will be because um, I think that would be preferable to the town um, Comment 1A was, as mentioned earlier, suggesting that uh, consider having the approval be on a temporary basis for a year, um, you know, see where he gets in that time. Um, if he's able to acquire the property and he can come back in that time, then great, we could look at it, putting everything back the way it was. Mm -hmm. um, if not, then maybe he comes back to the commission and, you know, ask for an extension of that time and, you know, kind of seeing where we are at that time with building construction and, you know, the efforts he's taken to try and acquire the property that's needed. Um, you know, grant the approval or review it at least at that time so we have some say, you know, down the road. Um, item B is related to us underground utility conduits. Um, as Mr. DeBacco mentioned, um, 
the original conduits were installed on private property um, within what was to be the right of way that he hasn't acquired yet. So he has relocated those into a very small area between the curbing and the corner of that property right now. Um, I did speak with Eversource today. Um, my understanding from them is they have some concerns with it being located so close to the property. Generally, they like to have some room for, they have easements on proposed uh, properties so they have access to get in if they need to. Um, that's not a showstopper for them, but their comment to me was they want their engineer to confirm that those utilities are in the right of way as it exists now. And, uh, you know, if that's the case, then they would be willing to consider, uh, you know, moving forward and allowing it, even though they are so close to the property corner. What it means is if they say if they can't get in and access those pipes without disturbing that person's property, and there will be a, a granite or a, a concrete monument at that location, then they may have to just abandon pipe and cut into the road and go around it. So. If that ever came up, it may be a problem down the road where we'd have to have cuts into the road to move their utilities, but it's, it's a workaround they'd be willing to um, consider. But, you know, I did make the comment to them, and they were um, amenable to if we made it a condition of the approval that they give us something and say they're okay with it. Um, you know, I, I'm looking for that so I can ensure whatever changes we're approving as part of this, we're not, you know, indirectly affecting something else that was done or, or the utility company's uh, approval. He had gotten in touch with the gas company and did send me something that the new sidewalk now will be located over the new gas gas line that was just installed. Um, they said they didn't have issue with that. Um, obviously not preferable, but you know they accepted it. Um, item number 1C is similar. It relates to MDC utility easement. Um, I, I don't know exactly where they stand with it. Looking at the plans that were submitted, uh, the 20-foot utility easement along the back side of 312 back lane has a sanitary sewer that discharges out into Luca Lane and then flows um, to the east. Looking at the plans, the original approval, they were going to release uh, their easement within the new right-of-way, which right now we're modifying that limit. So the plans are showing that easement stopping on 312 back lane and not continuing because we have moved the right-of-way in that location. So I also want to be sure as MDC is aware of that and that they are comfortable. I, I, if they have already released that easement and now we move our right away, now we have a gap on 312 back lane where they don't have an easement and it's over, it's a crossing private property. I don't know what the gap is, maybe four or five feet, but there's a gap there. So I would just want them to confirm that they are aware of the changes that uh, are being proposed and they are comfortable with it before we allow them to start uh, building homes. Then item 1D was related to uh, sidewalks and streetlights just not being installed until he's got written approval to do so. I think as Mr. DeBacco mentioned, um, it's not his preference, not our preference to really install those sidewalks on the other side of the road. So we want to give him uh, a chance to uh, correct the situation we're in and get us back to where we want to be. So um, my, my concern with putting that on there was, you know, after this approval, nothing would really stop him from going and installing walks on that side of the road. Um, even though that's not really what we're looking for. So as he said, there is a period of time still for them to work through development. Um, we're not going to be accepting the road for a period of time until he gets 80% uh, of the lots in. So I'd rather hold off on the sidewalks and the street lights until we get later in the project and determine we're going to have to accept them the way they are or we may have the opportunity to, to move them before this project is complete. Then item uh, 1E, uh, Peter reference is just... Um, Submission of an updated uh, title certificate, <clears throat> uh, title certificate deed and corporate resolution related to the revised right of way. Um, we had gotten one initially on the original right of way, which, as you're aware, didn't indicate he didn't have the property. Um, since that's not the case, now that we're revising it, we want to get one that reflects the actual land that he owns moving forward. Um, as we've discussed here, the road that exists now would be uh, offset to the right-of-way because we're just shifting the right-of-way with this jog in it. Um, it's not preferable, but it is, uh, as Frank mentioned, kind of lines you don't see. It's just where the right-of-way is. So um, we we are willing to accept that if we had to in the long term uh, just to try and accommodate the situation. Item number two um, is related to drainage. Uh, early in the project before the road was constructed, um, I had been out there with uh, Mr. DeBacco and uh, the, the contractor. We were looking at what's happening with the drainage patterns out here. The way it was originally approved, um, we have a good length of road, about 275 feet of road on the east side of Back Lane that drains south. And the way it was designed, all that flow enters the new subdivision and it flows down to the new catch basin structures. Um, 
I brought it up before the road was constructed that really we should have a catch basin on that corner that would tie into the existing structure that's in the intersection. Um, right now that flow goes to that structure. It used to be a catch basin, now it's a manhole. Um, from just good engineering practice, I think it makes sense before allowing that much flow to come into the new development, let's pick it up and put it into the existing system. Um, Mr. Nibaka was not amenable to installing that. Um, in the absence, was amenable? excuse me, was amenable? he was not amenable to installing no. the catch basin. Um, I, he'd have to you answer. You don't need a corner there, is there? Now, because you got one in a man, it's a manhole, because it's too much far into the road right away. And then you're not having one in that yeah, without it there, we have a good, uh, you know, I am not noted in my memo, 275 feet in the existing road and then another 250 feet in the, in the subdivision without catch basins. I'm typically spacing is about 250 feet on average. So, uh, you know, I brought it up just a good engineering practice. It would have been good to have a catch basin at that location. I think that was an oversight during the design. Um, he was not willing to install it. Uh, I had asked for supplemental calculations if, if since he already had an approved plan that didn't show it that would show that the system could handle it. Um, I had not received those uh, in the last few months. Um, so being that we're back here and we're trying to work with him and we're accepting things that we're not really comfortable with or don't prefer, um, I, I would like to make it a condition that he installs the catch basin. It's one type C catch basin. Um, it's probably 15 or 20 feet of 15 inch RCP pipe to put that water back into the system where it was originally intended to go and pick it up before it comes into the subdivision flowing down to our new structures and to the low point. Um, I certainly don't want to add any extra water down there. They're designed for a 10-year storm event, but you know it's not infrequent to get more higher, larger storm events. So I think anything we could pick up and get into the system further upstream is a benefit. Um, so I have that as a comment in here that I would like that to be part of a approval at this time. Um, just a few more comments. Comment number three on page two. Um, just related to the grading that was shown on the submitted plans along 312 back lane, um, they're grading it out as a, as a two to one slope, which is pretty steep, it's difficult to mow. Um, so I suggested that they just level that out to more of a three to one slope, maybe reduce the little grass shelf area, the flat shelf they have behind the curb. Um, it'll, it'll get a little narrower, but at least whoever owns the property at 312 in the future, um, if, if the sidewalk does not end up going back there, we'll be able better to maintain that area and it won't have such a steep slope that would be subject to erosion. I also had a comment in there that they just, um, you know, have this work done um, relatively quickly after the approval. It's been uh, a vertical dirt uh, excavation for months all summer. Um, he hasn't been willing to really re reshape that or shore it up. So as part of the approval, I would like him to get out there the next couple of weeks after the approval and get that shored up and get it stabilized while we still can get grass to grow. Otherwise, it's just going to be an ongoing problem all winter um, with erosion and getting into the new drainage system and such. Uh, comment number four just had to do with uh, we had requested that they move street lights um, from the east and west, uh, from the north and west sides of the road to where the sidewalk's going to be if this went forward. Um, so we have lights where people are walking. Just one of these lights is currently shown on a lot. I think it was just a draw drawing error, so I'm just asking them to move it back into the right of way. Uh, similarly, comment number five is all the lights in, in this plan, if approved, would run up the uh, west side, uh, east side rather, of Luca Lane. Um, as you got to the end where the cul-de-sac is, the last street light is on the west side. I would just make it consistent with all the others and move it over to the other side. So just a minor change on that. Um, item number six, the fire hydrant is shown on the side where the sidewalk would be moved to. Um, it looks like there may be a conflict, but from uh, field inspection, that sidewalk, was, I mean, that fire hydrant was actually installed on the other side of the road. So I would just like them to show it that way since we know that is the condition, at least have the plans as current as possible. Uh, item number seven, uh, the original plans called for some painted crosswalks at the intersections of Luca Lane with Stella Drive and Vinnie Drive. Um, I mean, gen just generally from um, traffic flow volumes that we have out here and what we do typically in town, we do have to go and repaint those every year. Um, these are not a couple of crossings that I would normally recommend we have crosswalks, so I'd rather just eliminate them. These are small residential streets and really wouldn't warrant them. Um, so I just asked them to remove them from the plan. So if we do approve it, it's just shown without the crosswalks at those locations. Number eight is just an incorrect contour label on one of the plans submitted. Um, number nine was just uh, we... We have uh, updated our standards as far as sidewalk construction and sidewalk ramp construction goes um, from what was previously. Uh, I don't think they're really any different, although we didn't have a lot of detail previously. So I just 
they've added some sidewalk ramp and sidewalk um, concrete sidewalk details to the plan just ask that it just be clear on these plans that you know those that's how we expect the sidewalks to be installed throughout the subdivision um, generally the the which was in the original approval as well we require five inch thick sidewalks eight inch thick at driveway crossings with reinforcing steel to handle the vehicle loads um, that's the same as it always was we didn't really have sidewalk ramp details but these provide some details as to what needs to be constructed so i just want to make it consistent with what we were doing now in town and then the last item number 10 um, was there some revisions to sheet five i had talked to his uh, surveyor today um, sounds like there was uh, i had made some co some of these comments before there's some um, errors that weren't addressed so they were going to relook at that and fix some of the dimensions on some of these sheets that were incorrect and then item c the last item was just to uh, right now the uh, one of the radiuses at 312 back lane there they were showing a concrete monument being installed within the existing driveway um, we'd rather them not dig up the driveway to do that which is have them install a railroad spike instead and that would be adequate for our needs thank you derek so so um, many of these are specific construction details uh, i just want to confirm that the the real crux of it is one a and C, one a and d which <clears throat> is basically saying we want you to come back in a year and tell us where you are i'm not going to let you build by virtue of i'm not going to give you approval to build the sidewalks and lights on 326 side until such time that we're comfortable with the idea that you've done due diligence to try and not go down this path Correct. fair enough right so so um going back to when we take the road over when are we legally obligated to take the road over we're five years from now and uh he gets to 80 percent he goes i want to I, I don't care i'm at 80 percent i'm building the sidewalk how do you, how do we get past that are we setting up a hurdle that we can't get past what do you think i think in the year time frame you'll assess where you are uh, with as Derek said construction as well as the efforts to acquire 312 at that point you can either continue it come back and you know discuss it again so you'll still have uh, an opportunity to review that um, you also at points down the road for phases two and three he has to come back for bonding uh, so there are other um, mr. tobacco uh, will be a familiar face to you in the next uh, couple of years I just think we should understand that the one year is just, we have no idea. These things can go on, they can be appealed, and <laughs> so we understand that this is not a final one year. We're, we're accepting it one year, but with the understanding that very well may be back here in a year. So normally we wouldn't do this, but we, he's, he's got clients who want to start construction on their homes, so we're looking at this as a temporary stopgap measure to allow that to happen but you're right we, this could be a permanent solution uh, and um, it's not the preferred solution but I think you heard from Mr. DeBacco and you heard from the town engineer that uh, neither of us want this to be you know the resolution of this but but you're right it's somewhat not in in his control or our control the, the only other thing is and I'm very concerned and understand you want to get your your home in uh, I would too uh, but I'm concerned about the to prove this before the MDC approves of that easement because we are by approving this and, and allowing them to you know to start construction on the house we're assuming that uh, uh, the utility is going to approve the easement what if they don't um, well, the way I think they will I mean yeah. just your experience professionals but the way, for a fact. the way items 1B and C, which related to Eversource and MDC utilities respectively, were, was written was that we would not issue the building permits until we had that confirmation. So That's what I want to I yeah. want to know that that confirmation, you know, has been done because those things have to be drawn and, you know, descriptions have to be done, have to be recorded. And yeah, I mean, this, this has a ripple effect. We're changing some things that we're aware of, but there's also yeah. other parties involved in this, um, in this development, and I want to make sure that they're not... Um, caught off guard by what we're looking to change here and you know my, my thought with the way I wrote it was if if you decided to approve it then we would verify those before we start the building permit process that's I just wanted to have that that's important yes, Joe. Yeah, I, I also am trying to get comfortable with a way to 
address everybody's needs here, but I guess I've got I've got some questions on the one year concept, which I appreciate why the town wants the one year. But I guess my questions include if if in the next eleven months he sells a lot and builds a house and somebody's bought that house and is living in that house and then he comes back one month after that to us on his one year and we deny it and we I guess what do we do are we taking back the waiver and modification or it was only good for a year what does it do to everything that's been done sale wise and construction wise during that 12 month period and I guess I'm just fundamentally having difficulty understanding how you can go sell lots to people. They can't get a building permit, but you're selling them a building lot and we're leaving conditions in place that have certain ramifications and I'm not sure what those ramifications are. It would seem to me that we can refuse, if it, if it comes back to us, houses are built, we could refuse to go back and just keep it the way it is. We, we have those alternatives. But does that mean that he just loses a whole bunch of his it later days, or does it mean it affects the people who've already bought the first four houses? It, you know, I'm not sure how else you, you could, you can put it. Are you gonna say no, no, sub, you know, it, it's, I understand it, it, it's a problem. I mean, we didn't create the problem, right? but I think that Right. Yeah. I, the one year is not going to change yeah, our answer. I mean, if we're moving ahead, we're moving ahead. A year from now, we're not not moving ahead. Well, right. I guess you know that. Just to follow up on Joe's point, I mean, I have a problem with the one year for the same reason he does. You know what happens? You know, does the music stop and the people, you know, who have building permits, you know, lose them? The people who have potential COs lose them. You know, does the subdivision evaporate? And, and frankly, I, you know, I'm not entirely sure what this application is. You know, whether it's a resubdivision or a modification of a special permit or what. But I, I don't know on what basis we can have a subdivision approval that evaporates after a year. I mean, it's an administrative process, and if. He gets the waivers and complies with the regulations. You know, it, it's still good for whatever period of time it was. Um, you know, I, I have a concern about having a kind of a, a lapsing conditional subdivision with new requirements that weren't in the original one. That may, you know, we may feel that we have leverage over the developer as a result of it, but I think we may be exposing ourselves to liability on the part of innocent third parties, uh, you know, who frankly may not be able to get financing if the bank starts digging too deeply into, you know, what kind of a subdivision approval do you really have here? I don't, I don't think Derek's intent with this one year uh, caveat was to impact the validity of the entire subdivision it was the aspect of it that he's the applicants asking to modify so that we had the ability to continue to monitor this and make sure some serious efforts are being made to resolve it so that it can go back to the original approval uh, maybe this isn't worded um, you know properly to, and creates that kind of confusion but I but I don't think um, the uh, overall subdivision uh, intent was to you know was to be in jeopardy regarding these, you know, and, it, and it's just a couple of specific things that they're asking to modify. So, um, you know, we're not looking at it as, you know, in a year the subdivision's becoming null and void. It's this aspect of this particular request that is what we're talking about. So, so maybe it's not written the right way or leads to some confusion, but I just want to make sure, you know, it's clear that's not uh, uh, what, we, what was in, intended here. So. so it sounds good, and, and I think I understand the intent. What if the one year is just not there? To, you know, so it doesn't go away. Again, we talked about this. You really can't consider it to be temporary. It's permanent, right? If we take this path, you got to expect that possibly it's going to get built this way. Mm -hmm. So what is it that incentivizes the developer never to get there, right? Lot one. Lot, Lot one. one. Right. There is a big incentive here. So, and is that enough? I, you, know, you have to let Mr. Debacco speak to that. But I, you know, based on our conversations with him, you know, clearly. Uh, and, but in a year, we'll know whether he's been he's made progress and whether this is still a realistic scenario for him to pursue that. And if not, you know, then we start you know uh, talking about this is the final uh, scenario that that we're talking about. Although it's not preferred. So, um, 
The, concern, the reason why I raised that is, you know, as you just stated, I think Mr. DeBacco is interested in getting lot one back, and that's his motivation. Um, you know, I know he had mentioned it tonight. I just, there's no, I'm not convinced. Well, I, I don't care about lot one. I care about the sidewalks and, and where they are placed with respect to what would be best for the town. Um, so, so that was really my concern in raising that was, um, and I mentioned earlier, if we, if we gave the, it may, maybe no, item D covers this, but if we gave the approval, you know, what stops him from just going out and building the sidewalks and he'll come back three years from now and go get his lot one and then we're stuck with the walks on the side of the road we really didn't want. So it was just a measure, um, as Peter said, I wasn't looking to void the subdivision approval. I think I was referring specifically to the approval to allow the right of way to be non standard with the jog and the approval to move the sidewalks to the other side is something we want to revisit at some point before, you know, it wouldn't, my, my envisioning, and like Peter said, maybe it wasn't worried, right, was that it wouldn't affect any of the rest of the subdivision or development or structure that's out there. It's just a matter of having some way of us to ensure he doesn't go out a month after this approval and build the sidewalks on the other side, and then we have really no say in where they go. Well, I mean, that that's fine. It's just, I, I <clears> think, you know, the idea of revisiting a year from now when, you know, when we have no binary option of what to do other than say, oh, well, you know, it, what we approved then is what we have now. Um, you know, it's kind of a meaningless exercise. Right, so 1A almost becomes a moot point. I mean, 1D one, one is the one that's saying no sidewalks, you know, if the developer is okay with these conditions as we put them in, and even if he's not, I guess if that's what we decide, basically you're not gonna be given the okay to build the sidewalks where it is now proposed in a, in a, an approved subdivision on the, South and east side until we tell it's okay. Right. Right. Correct. It, it We're not going to go there until a while. It seems to me that that one A is really uh, a a device to have uh, some ad, you know administrative uh, tickler onto this to make sure that that uh, it doesn't get buried under underneath the, the course of time. Uh, before someone takes a look to see that, that, that this is either progressing as we hope or is not. But it doesn't seem like that's the kind of matter that should be coming back to this commission. I think what we have to determine tonight is more of a, you know, are we going to approve these waivers as, as, as a permanent feature to the uh, modification to the site plan and, and assume that that's going to be so. if if things come to pass that he wants to, you know, recapture that lot number one and so that he can, you know, have an additional lot to sell, that's his economic incentive. <clears throat> and um, at that point in time, it comes back to, to the commission because that would require an additional waiver or modification. Well, I have a question on that. Let's, let's say he tries the best he can, but it takes three years until he can acquire 312 and in the meantime he's built out and sold 80 percent of the lots he's built the sidewalk per the waivers the road and everything and then on the third anniversary he finally gets 312 and then he comes back to us for I guess a modification to now create lot one does he really need a waiver at that point to create lot one because if he doesn't we have no ability to say no, and the incentive may not be as much of an incentive if he can end up doing well, lot the, one someday anyway. Well, the sidewalk, <clears throat> the sidewalk's already been built on the other side. Right. Right. So he has no need to put the sidewalk on the other side at all. So what, I, I think I'm, I'm with you. That's kind of the question I was asking before. You know, what's, <clears throat> what's going to bring him back? Later on, after he's are we are we setting ourselves up at a point where you know he's going to build that sidewalk and he's going to take us to court if we say no because he's sold his 80 lots and he goes and he builds a sidewalk in the south side and then all leverage is gone, right? When he comes back for one, because then if it's just a technical resubdivision, we don't have a lot of right. bases to he, say he, no to that. He right? owns 312. He owns the right. you know that remnant piece. Right. Do we have other questions for Derek? Maybe we bring the applicant back into his spot? Probably not. Thanks, Eric. Well, you know, there, 
Can I just threaten, is there a way that with the applicant's agreement and stipulation that we could put more constraints on the potential lot one future scenario to try to make sure that 312 is acquired? Such as? I don't know. Oh, like come on, come on the land really use really lawyer, come on. <laughs> well, isn't lot one going to be undersized unless 312 is acquired? There is no lot one without the back side of 312, so. Right, and again, it's just that 312 is acquired too late for the sidewalks mm -hmm. and for the right of way. Can I just add something? <clears throat> I don't want to build the sidewalk. I'll wait till house number 20 or 19. I don't want it on that side. <clears throat> so I have no issue. I don't know why we're waiting and focusing on one year. I don't care if it's five years or six years. I have the bond on the road for a sidewalk. I have no intentions of constructing a sidewalk at all. And if you want to put that as a condition that no sidewalks will be built until further reviewed, I'm okay with that too. Because like I said, I can be at lot 18, 19 and not build any sidewalks. Because until the town takes title to the road, the sidewalk does not have to be there. Yeah, exactly. At, at some point though, your your opinion might well change when you need to and you want to unload the road and put give it to the town and then the sidewalk will get built it may, may not have been where you always well, wanted it but i believe that's all. i believe that we can still turn over the road and still have that section bonded no, no. you have you have to have everything complete okay. every i dotted t cross before the town will accept the road okay yeah, I mean, and so so one A says, you know, the approval expires. I mean, you could just change that and say, you know, in a, in a year you're coming back. It's just a condition. Come back and see us, you know, status us, and and the whole it expires is is a moot point. Um, you know, I think that kind of addresses that. It's not going away. This is a permanent approval if we give it to it, and only if things work out are we ever going to revise it to what we collectively would prefer. There's another option if we choose to go that way, um, is I can cross the road somewhere earlier and put it back on the west side, as Derek mentioned, once I get in off a of back lane. It just popped into my head. You come in here and then cross back this way. And then I'm back earlier. Instead of crossing three intersections, the town right of way, I'm back to the original design. We, don't, we won't allow you to do a mid-block pedestrian crossing. So that would have to be at an intersection here? Even there, that's not, as Derek okay. said earlier, not preferred either. So. Not to. Uh, it's just shoot a down suggestion. Ideas, I, did. I don't know the no. fundamentals behind it, and I just thought I'd put yeah. that out there. Yeah. So we've heard a lot of the facts. Would somebody else from the public, now that you've heard a little bit more about it, care to speak? Um, okay, I'm looking at the gentleman behind you. I wanted to make sure that he got his opportunity first. Did, did you want to speak? Okay. Should I re-identify myself? M Michael Volano. Um, one thing concerned us slightly as the homeowners was the, if, if this goes through and gets approved tonight, we'd have to then go get MDC and Eversource approval before permits would be released. I, I just wonder if I could appeal to this body to maybe for the first two families who are already sold, since we all believe we will get those approvals, say we'll release those two permits before we get MDC and Eversource approvals, but nobody, no permits after that till he gets them because I don't know how many weeks or months it'll take to get those approvals and I'm just worried about not getting the house started before winter now. That's not um, within our jurisdiction, I don't think. We don't we issue building permits. Yeah. We certainly understand your plea. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. You're all set? Anybody else? Okay. I have just a couple yeah. more questions on the short sale. How long has that discussion gone on? What's the status? I, I know you've brought us up to date and really clear. Has it been the last six months, the last six years? That and information that I gave you was as of yesterday. As of yesterday. And you started the discussion with the purchase option how many years ago? We filed for the option agreement to execute our agreement in April of 2016. April of 16. And we didn't know it was an issue until four or five months ago and I told Derek that we don't have the rights to that property yet and we're still waiting to purchase it. So it's been a year and a half that you've been yes. eyeing the property yeah. anyway. So 
I was the one that brought it up and mentioned to the town that because Derek asked when you're going to grade the property, and I said I don't have the rights to that property yet. So it, I, I have not been hiding any information. I've been I, to myself. I believe I've been very forthcoming with the town. Um, there are things I don't agree with, as any other person would do, um, such as that catch basin. Um, but and I can go through that with you later. Um, but I think what we're looking for are the modifications on the sidewalk, and the modifications for the right of way. The previous town engineer approved the design that was submitted, and the calculations did come very late. No excuse from the engineer. Derek has them, and I'm prepared to go over them with you. I've brought drawings for you to understand that if we need to. I asked about the short sale because I have seen a variety of short sales come together after two, two and a half years. So it's yeah. not, you know, just to be on the sunny side of the street, if I could say it that way. It's uh, no, they, I, I, I was told they do we take a while. wouldn't be here if you had that all together. I, I have never been involved in one before. This is my first. Um, my attorney, Pullman and Connolly, is on it. I've got three of them in their firm. Josh Kindle, um, John Kaplan, and Joshua Hawks Lads. I don't know if you know any of them. All three of them are involved in this to the tune of almost 1100 bucks an hour. So it's not something that we're taking lightly. We're pursuing it very aggressively. We cannot push what's not in my control. The, the problem is that we have no control. Nobody has any control over the speed of the process. Oh, we agree. Yeah. Especially the banks today when it comes to foreclosure have absolutely no idea the pace they're going to move. We just don't know. It, and it's, it's, not, it's beyond his control. Any other specific questions? Uh, are people ready to <coughs> close the hearing? Do we, do we want to know the specific responses to the engineering comments that Derek may have offered the applicant or I'm kind of inclined not to spend much time on that we have his most recent letter and we can stick to that I think um, you know I, th I think we could if, if we wanted to take this path revise 1a to something just simple as you know we expect the applicant back before it's the status the efforts in a year, you know, and leave all the other stuff that says it's not, you know, it's a temporary approval out of the di discussion. Do you tend to agree? I'm looking at, you know, I'm looking at the two land use lawyers and saying, does that really address your basic concern about the thing expiring? It is what it is. It's a, it's a permanent approval. That's what we're really talking about here. Yeah, I mean, uh, frankly, I think that's how we would have to look at it. I mean, that addresses that specific concern I guess I'm I'm back thinking something we talked about in the beginning he's got two requests and I think he answered that the sidewalk waiver was life and death essential or he could not go forward and I think as to the other waiver for the right-of-way he explained that it would he'd have to reduce the size of lot 20 or something I think he was explaining that does that if you didn't get the right-of-way waiver does that have the effect of eliminating any lots or only reducing the size of lots it only reduces the lot size of lot one this area that it's currently in is unbuildable anyway uh, but it's a piece of usable property for this home uh, the only real sacrifice is the financial loss of lot one right again I'm just I'm talking out loud here and this probably <laughs> doesn't make sense but in theory if you gave him only the sidewalk waiver does that create some super incentive for him to work out all these issues because without the other waiver he's short a lot so so a big issue. i kind of like where you're going it's a big incentive. I'm, I'm not sure i followed it i got your What's point does it I and, and i guess from the town engineer's perspective is that materially simplifying concerns from the town's perspective if the right of way is not modified or waived, either from a drainage or any other perspective. Well, the, the issue, the reason why he needs the modification on the right of way is because as it stands now, the, there's private property within the public right of way, which has been the holdup for issuance of building permits. So 
we had talked with him about other options other than putting the jog in the right of way like that and to as you were talking about earlier in the meeting to uh, construct the right of way in the road um, to standards would it would have a ripple effect up through the whole subdivision it would require some wait 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 the, the public uh, public infrastructure is not in the private right away right right the, the right now as it stands the way it, just it, not symmetrical it's with his revision it's not symmetric but there is no private infrastructure in the right away if we don't allow him to do that then no, no, so that's we would be in the situation we're in now where we have private property that is within the right away which is the whole issue but our so it's not our what, regs require it to be symmetrical right if somebody when you that is that is standard 50 foot right away with he's built the road already had he not built the road we could have made some line adjustments and then built the road but the road's already in place so we're kind of locked in with where the road is so we make sure it stays within the right away the, the curb line what am what, i i must be missing something the curb line is with right there. is within the property he point is it's right not in 312's property the curb it, is correct. not in 312's property correct is there anything within 312's property not does the corner just come within two feet of the curb that happens all over the place yeah right that's the modification he's seeking in the right-of-way is to allow it's that not in the right-of-way the right-of-way is 312 it's not our right-of-way it's not his property it's a, he's put the curb too close to somebody else if he property. came in with this plan initially we would have said no absolutely right, right. But, i mean with this right-of-way alignment we would have said no but we're kind of here now while we're saying but, we'll but accept it to his question though if, if 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 we didn't give him the right of way waiver right which is saying i want a constant 10 feet off the back of the curb or a 50 foot right of way if we didn't give him that um he can't have final approval until he gets it so is that the financial incentive to make him come back if you didn't give it to him you'd have to revise the right of way so it has this jog in it where 312 it projects would. into it right it, w it would right that's that, so that would, would be, be the, the new right that would be the new right of way boundary i mean uh, utilities on that side that go over 312 that would no there were underground conduits that have been relocated off of that property right. and, um and, and, and i mean you know i'm not as familiar with re your regulations the there's a requirement for a 50 foot right away which he had originally and he has with this technically um it's more the geometry of the right of way is, is non-standard so um you know i'm not aware of any geometric requirements necessarily on the right-of-way itself so i mean i guess technically you could say he had a 50-foot right-of-way he still has a 50-foot wide right-of-way it's non-standard in his geometry but i don't know uh, from a legal perspective that that requires you to provide a modification for that so let me ask the land use lawyers does if if we walk away today and we don't give him the waiver he's legally a lot you know in here it's a it's really kind of a bad permit we've given him is it not because we've said okay we've given him an approval and we know darn well the right-of-way doesn't give a full 50 feet right i mean i guess in the normal situation you're going to have what a 22 foot road and however many feet equal on each side of the pavement <laughs> width so I guess what I was really asking is if that's what's normally required under our regs, I guess in theory he'd have to dig up the pavement and redo his whole road to achieve that pavement in the middle right of way on each side, and he'd probably lose lots or portions of lots in the process. Just wanted to understand, because isn't that really the textbook design that you would be doing if you were starting fresh? Yeah, I guess I wonder whether, I guess I wonder whether, you know, not having the waiver is going to drive him to okay. have to come back and change it. Right. I'm saying if it only leaves it's us with an right irregular right. shaped right of way, it probably doesn't do anything. Doesn't but really if, do and, it and if it required him to rip up the road he's got, I'm not sure whether that achieves anything or not either at this point. So we talked our way through it Maybe. and came back and said it's not going to get us there. That's why I wasn't saying anything. <laughs> where it was going to end. <laughs> Other thoughts and comments? <clears throat> All right. So, in general, we've got a, a Derek suggested, uh, you know, cr criteria by which to approve this thing, conditions. 
Um, I, I think we've kind of talked to the fact that 1A doesn't really work, but a simple restatement that you know, we want to see you back in a, in a year for a status on things. That's kind of a proposal. Uh, we do have an open, we do have a, an open public hearing, so we should deal with that if we all think we've uh, heard everything from the applicant and the public. One last chance for anybody from the public. You want a motion to close the hearing? If, okay. if we're ready. Before I would just ask the town engineer if he's got anything else he'd like to add because uh, we've covered a lot of ground or any further ideas beyond what you've already shared with us. Um, no. Um, you know, like I had said, uh, if the town was aware of the situation, we wouldn't have allowed them to start, but this is where we are, so we're uh, trying to be proactive here and help. Um, like I said, if this does become the permanent situation, um, I think we've talked internally and are satisfied that uh, we can live with what we would have as far as sidewalks on the opposite side of the street in the irregular right away. Um, but, you know, with, with that, we're willing to allow it with the hopes that you can come back and, you know, set it back to the original approval. Um, at some point in the near future. All right. Last comments from the applicant. All right. I'm sorry. I, guess, I guess my question for for Derek is, you know, the conditions for the waiver that um, Joe read earlier, you know, was that if engineering was involved, that we get your memo and consider it. I guess the I just want to hear you confirm again the last thing you said, which was, you know, if at the end of the day, this is what we're stuck with. You know, it's basically a, a non-symmetrical right-of-way and a sidewalk on a less than ideal side of the street. But you don't believe that that creates insurmountable problems for the town at the point where ultimately it acquires, you know, the public improvements and that there's no real danger to public health and safety that's correct okay thank you okay. applicant before we can i okay do i have an opportunity yeah just based on that one oh. comment i just want to uh chris thompson on 1024 follybrook boulevard and potential buyer uh trying to but based on what was just said i wanted to see mr hammer's response to that comment just now that question and that comment because i was just paying attention to you the most on what in terms of the development and the concerns of the long-term concerns i just wanted to hear more about based on what the engineer just said to that question uh, you're going to say something i i don't i don't really have it. anything to i mean i just just from the long-term so possible to hear from, from the a, engineer from a law perspective yeah, from, I mean, from, a, from a these, legal from a legal well, perspective these guys are the two legal guys that's that's what i mean we're not getting 1100 dollars an hour right. so i'm not going to tell you anything we're not going to give advice <laughs> but does it meet the is the was that comment meet what the i think you're going to concerns I think, are. I think through the course of our deliberations and vote you're going to yeah, get a gonna better get feel that. for where everybody is as a as a body here yeah, I mean, I, I guess I asked the question for two reasons. One, because it's required by our regulations that we yeah. confirm those things. And two, you know, this, this is not standard. This is not right. ideal. This is not what we were originally looking at. But I just wanted to reassure myself that we weren't buying a problem by saying, all right, we're going to Band-Aid over this yeah. to, to deal with, you know, the fact that he didn't get the corner of 312. Right. And, you know, that was why I asked the question the way I did. Correct. And that there won't be any town, any need to expend town <coughs> resources to fix something that right. ends up right. in place. Yeah. That's what I thought. We have okay. to feel comfortable. Absolutely. Right. So I'm, I'm about to say that I'm okay, but I don't know what I'm going to say on my K2 based on the letter that you have in front of you. So I, I just, I want to clarify that if I say, okay, I'm happy with what we're going to do. We're only reviewing, approving, and setting circumstances and conditions for the sidewalk and only the right-of-way, nothing else per this letter. So, so what the town engineer has proposed and what we will deliberate upon is ten, 10 items. The 10 items in, in uh, his memo dated October 3rd which so, you got tonight so if i have those then i'm going to want to review each one of those because i have concerns as we go down the mall because we haven't addressed them all 
But if it's just for the sidewalk and the waiver, I'm okay with it. But if we're going to start holding up storm drainage, recalculations, new maps, permit issues, I want to review them and I want to understand them. All right. Well, then, well, I still have that opportunity. Yeah, I mean, that's. Yeah, you know, if, chairman, he, if he I, can't I want address to talk them. about that catch basin stuff. I don't, I'm yeah. not sure I agree with what he just said. Well, that, that that, as long as you're okay with. Yeah, I, I, I brought everything with me, so I'm prepared to talk about his previous e his email or letter. I just got to mix them both together because some of them fell off and some got modified. Yeah. Um, so I'm prepared to go over them as best I can, but I would like the opportunity to address them all. So do you want to do it right now? Or are I can, you yeah. the, the ones on the new one? Um, we can do the new ones, and I can mix them in with the old ones. I can do that. But so I, I, the I guess the old ones, ones fall off the table, right? So I don't really care about those. Correct. Um, okay. It's the ones that he talked to tonight. Okay. Um, and, and I think we talked about the B and C being the fact that there are st still some things. after. Uh, you know, assuming you were to get approval tonight, there's still a couple more things, one B and C, that you need to do before a building permit would come up. Well, Probably. I, I do want to go over them and just let you know what I'm going to be up against to put these together, and we are pursuing them diligently. It's not like we're not trying to, uh, and one of them is very easily, if we can walk across the hall, we would know if the Mylars were filed for the MDC. If they weren't filed, the existing easements are existing, never been changed. Mm -hmm. But I can't do that because that door is locked. So will the MDC be willing to negotiate and work things out? They always are. Do they move quickly? A snail goes faster. So I could be tied up six months to a year deliberating to get Derek whatever he needs to issue these permits. Okay. Now, well, ultimately... That, that's going to be the case regardless of what we do. No matter what happens, yeah. if, they, if they've been released, the sewer is already on private property. If mm -hmm. I can't get it back, then what? You're not going to issue building permits forever? That's, uh, that's a concern. So I, I need to understand every one of these items because... These two homeowners already acquired their property and they own them. So I guess I guess I'm sitting here struggling with um, the only option is for us to continue the hearing, which is kind of what you heard. I don't know if I need to continue on. the hearing, but I just want to understand them okay. and talk about them so that we're all on the same page. Because we probably aren't because nobody here is going to be able to resolve it for you either. So no, because but not within our jurisdiction. Right. No, but all the utility companies. I've paid all their fees, I've paid all their dues, we're still in constant communications, we've built the subdivision per their regulations, per their understandings, and I'm hoping that it's just going to be a matter of saying, yeah, you know, contact the MDC, they're open to, uh, to re-delineating re the easements, and that is satisfactory to issue a permit, not say, okay, let's do the whole process, get everything put together, and nine months later, here you go. Okay, so how would you like to proceed with this right now? You, you I'm, want, look, wanna... I'm, I'm, I'm specifically asking for a waiver on the sidewalk and the right-of-way so that I can get a building permit because those are the issues that are in front of us. Everything else that's coming out, we can discuss and try to resolve, but I don't believe that should be a requirement to hold these two homeowners up. Well, except that the town engineer asked for you to be um, agreeable to certain things that would make the final product better and you weren't. I, I, I'm, so, now I'm he, and so now there is a leveraging going on and mm -hmm. you'll need to accept that if you want to go farther. No, I'm willing to negotiate and work with the town, but I got the email at 6 o'clock at night. Everybody's closed. And he got it yesterday. He got, he got your plans he asked yesterday. For it yesterday at noon and I believe So it was he got your plans yesterday at noon and then you're going to bust him because he no, didn't I'm give not, you I'm comments not, back I'm until not, today? That's not what I'm saying. I'm not busting him, but you're asking me to accept everything he's put in that letter. So we'll leave it open until next week. And you, you got two weeks to, you know, to the next meeting. And I mean, we'll, and, I mean we'll and, and frankly, I don't think all of these things are, are new issues that he's using as leverage. I think some of these items are a function of the fact that you don't own the property that you showed as part of your subdivision. I never said I owned it when I filed the subdivision. I said I had rights to purchase. I never hid that. Those applications and that paperwork was submitted to this committee when I originally filed it. Okay, but but you're asking us to go forward on the presumption or the premise or the worst case scenario that you don't own it, so the plans have to be modified to reflect that. And we can do that. Okay. Um, but to, to, I don't know what language you're going to say the permits can be released. 
at what point. If I get a verb, if I get a quick memo like I did with CNG that I sent to, to Derek, they're okay. And then I get a quick phone call that I haven't gotten yet that Derek got from Nelson today that he's okay, but I haven't gotten that. And then we call MDC and they say, yeah, we'll go back and we figure it out, but it's gonna take us nine months. Do I get a permit or do I have to wait nine months? And I guess for the fourth time, I'll say that's not within our jurisdiction. We're only dealing with the subdivision that is now being modified to take the back part of 312 out, and that's what these conditions pertain to. I, I, th I think another way to put it is, what happens if a building permit is issued and then MDC says, no, I'm not gonna do it. I mean, then the building permit has been issued already. How do you build the house unless you move the, the easement has to be moved? Well, see, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. Everything's been built for the MDC. <coughs> And all the all the taps but are in here. the sewers. But we're here we, today. we are, but everything is in. It's all built to their regulations, to their easements, their requirements. I understand as of today what Derek is pointing out is that there's a potential gap of what I was supposed to acquire on the back of three twelve. If the lien has been removed, there is six feet by twenty feet in the triangular fashion, that's unaccessible on either side. Mm. Now what is to say, God forbid I play devil's advocate. I don't get it either way. Yeah, no, I, I get you. What am I going to do? I'm going to have these two homeowners who own and pay taxes in Wethersfield as a building lot and not being able to build a home. That's what you're going to tell me today if you approve it per these, these recommendations. Because Derek's memo says no permits until MDC approval. And I have an issue with that. But the question could Derek, be, Derek, what you, happens if, the, if MDC refuses the permit? I mean, it's not likely that they will. Hmm? It's not likely that they will, obviously. But, but huh? it's timing. It's timing. Did, you know, you obviously came up. Did you? Yeah, I, 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 well, I guess to respond to, you know, why I have a concern from the town's perspective is um, he had come in and gotten approval for a right away that he, um, you know, misrepresented, whether intentionally or not. Um, you know, to his claims that he came to us to let us know of this problem, that was not the case. I found out from this by happenstance, talking to the owner of 312, who let me know that this had not been acquired. Of course, at that point, the road was already in. So we are boxed into a very difficult situation from the town's perspective. Um, I don't like it. It's been a very difficult process dealing with Mr. DeBacco, but we're here trying to be reasonable within the purview of looking at what's in the best interest for the town. They had gotten approval, he had gotten approval for a right of way that MDC may or may not have released easements to. He's modifying that right of way now. I'm only going by what he submitted on his plans. That's what brought it to my attention that there's this gap. And I don't want the town to be approving something that MDC says, wait a minute, that, that changes what we've already done. Now, it may or may not have been done. I'm not clear on that, but based on the plans, it, it looks like it's already been done. So, all I need for myself as the town engineer to understand that this affects, as I said earlier, not just us as the town and the board, but also other utilities that are involved in this development. If that has some impact on them, that they need to be aware of it. We need to know that they're comfortable with making that change. I don't know the process. If I get a letter from them stating we're aware there is a gap here that we don't own and we have our sewer on a private property, but we are gonna work, for, you know, work through that and we have no issue with you approving this as it as is then we would be okay with issuing building permits but you know we have held up the building permits not to you know make it an issue for anybody else or any third parties that are involved but things were misrepresented to the town we we came aware of it by our own doing not by not by the developer so we're doing our best here to try and rectify things if he's coming here asking me as the engineer to come forth and say well what do i need to approve it this is what i feel i need to be comfortable approving it to try and work with him and get this done. Um, so, as I'm saying, I don't, I'm not saying I need revised easement maps from MDC showing that it's all been filed on the land. I'm just saying I need a statement or a letter from them saying they're okay with what we're approving and they understand what that may in, impact them, both Eversource and MDC, which is why I recommend these conditions. Thank you. But by the way, only because I know this much about the process, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how did MDC release the property at all period right. if it wasn't the owner of 312 asking for it to be done 
actually, you know, as you're talking through it, the modifications that we asked for did not release anything. It just modified the new locations. So if I finally understand what Derek is saying, if we're coming down this way and the triangular piece is gone, the triangular piece is irrelevant because the description that's given to the MDC goes from this all the way down to their structure. Originally it did. It still does. It never, it never got removed, it never got abandoned. The modifications were for the rework that we did through here and up this way and back down to the sewer. So all the easements that are in play on the back of 312 are still there. That, that's, I, th I think we're talking the same language, which is that the property owner of 312 has the easement. You don't own that. MDC wouldn't have been in an, in an illegal position to release an easement on no, a third-party property it, correct. owner. They just incorporated their easement with the new easements. So they've never released anything other than the abandonment of the sewer that we've now installed as new. That so, was the only so going release. back to Derek's description of what he's looking for, it's a, it's a, he wants to check the box that we're not exposed. Not necessarily that if some modifications have to be yet to be made, you would be holding up or recommending to the building department to hold up building permits? Yeah, that's correct. If what he's saying is correct, then they would have no issues telling us we're all set, we have not released those easements. We don't have a problem here, then we move forward. So it's just a matter of confirming that. Okay. So that may be the case. Like I said, I'm only making the comment based on what I see on the plans he submitted to me. You know, maybe they're not representing it properly. Derek, how fast do you think you could get MDC to say that to you or write it in a I mean, I can you try and get that from them money? too, but what's that? You have more influence than he has? I could certainly, you know, I would like make efforts. Yeah, I could do that. I, don't, I can't answer you as how quickly they'll respond to me. Right. I don't know this whole. Vote tonight until you get that. That's under if 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 the if the applicant is not comfortable accepting these and you're not comfortable issuing an approval based on these, then well, maybe without, we just give them a chance them. to get it. But it sounds like it may not be an issue anymore. Right. But you still need the condition just to be safe. Yeah. Yeah. And then you spoke with EverSource today. If I understood that right, sounds like they're okay. <clears throat> Based they told on me the they want they need to do some field confirmations, right. um, and they would consider it if they can confirm that those utilities have been moved into the right of way, which, from my understanding, they have been. Yep. Um, so I think that one would progress. Um, I had spoken quickly. with someone right. at their um, title department or real estate department. More of the reason to keep this open until the next meeting. Try to get. Derek to get these clarified. His memo is, right, is, is dated today. Hmm. What's another couple of weeks? Keep it open. Clarify some things. Mm -hmm. Based upon that, I don't know why I mean, I, I think what we, we're trying to accommodate everybody and I think we have to be, as Derek has sort of cautioned us, extremely careful because if we now unleash houses that are two-thirds constructed and then we find out that there's a problem with MDC we're really everybody's gonna have a really bigger problem at that point than they do today the town the buyers the developer everybody right so I think we have some level of due diligence and if he can knock off B and C in the next two weeks and we know we don't have a problem that's great for everybody and our problem is, as well as the two homeowners there with the title insurance, mortgage insurance, and follow-up that needs to be done, a, a two-week, um, leaving it open for two weeks, I think, is win-win. I'm, I'm, I'm perfectly okay with that. You know, I, I understand the applicants, he'd, do, he'd rather have a shorter list of conditions. So if two weeks gets us to the point where these can be dropped off or at least uh, the wording changed a little bit because of what we do, in fact, know, as you know, maybe tomorrow we know enough to change the, the language a little bit to be softer on the applicant and more minimal. Okay. Do we? I'm, I'm seeing at least three or four of us are in that boat at this point to ho hold the hearing open. Right. I think this so. This also gets the applicant, you know, um, more time to fully analyze today's memorandum. Hmm. Um, 
uh, to be able to respond authoritatively. And Tom, you know, also to clarify the issues that George raised in, in regards to the catch basin, if the point counterpoint, both sides should be heard. Right. They could put something in writing to, to state their objectives, I think. I can review that today because I have that with me. Okay. So I, I thought the applicant had said there were some later technical adjustments Derek was asking for that he disagreed with to the extent that he's able to articulate that in two minutes. Are we better off knowing those tonight than waiting two weeks and we still don't know what they are? I'll leave that up to the applicant to offer. When you look at his new his new letter, I are there other ones on here that initially cause you some agita too? Um, I, I can't imagine three grading is an issue. For street light, that's just a blip on the plans. Um, I can't imagine five does fire hydrant. It's been installed. No, uh, I so think it's it's going to come down to just the releasing of the permits, and then the the uh, the main one is going to be the storm drainage issue okay. that we had a previous previously approved by the previous engineer. Yep. But it's also a pretty inexpensive issue too, right? And when that request was made, we were setting up for paving. Okay. All right, so um, is, is there a proposal? Can I have a, an, a motion? motion? Motion to continue, or you want a partial motion? Uh, I'd suggest just a, a motion to continue the hearing until two weeks from now. I'll second the motion. motion to continue for two weeks. And I'll We're second this. Second I'll make the motion then, George. You can second. <laughs> You'll see, make it in second. <laughs> All right. So we have a motion in second. Um, no other issues that I, that the commission wants them to follow either party to follow up in. With, this is either Derek or or the applicant. No. Nothing specific. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Is there anybody who doesn't agree with that? Okay. So we should have had a final decision tonight. And I know you do too. Yeah, he might have a final decision that he likes better in two weeks. Exactly. That's where I was going to go. Do we have to have eight people here in two weeks? At least seven. seven. At least seven. Did you want me to review the, uh, the storm drainage the issue or not? Did you want to review the storm drainage issue or postpone that until next week? Um, not specifically with us. We're going to rely on Derek's suggestion. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that's kind of where it's going to be at. So, if, if the calculations don't support the catch basin, but he wants it, he's going to get it. So, so knowing what I know as an engineer designing this stuff, there's no way that the calculations wouldn't support it. What, what you're asking me is if your calculations support the fact that I don't need it. Yeah, your calculations might suggest it's not needed, but I know it's better. Yeah. All right, and it's I know it's not expensive, so I'm wondering why you're arguing about it's it. It's a fifteen thousand yeah, dollar bill. Wondering. Exactly yeah. what yeah. you said. But it was something that wasn't needed in the original concept, and these are all the, the structures that are down there. One hundred and seventy-five feet from there is the next one. That's a lot of that's a lot of distance. But it's but it's two it's two hundred fifty feet of road up on the top on yeah, back right. lane that has no basin corner. so it's well, probably 125 that way and 125 that way that's all flowing down from here yeah. it's right here i think it's 235 two 270. sorry and catching it at I'm the on a street where the town has not put in a catch basin at in fact the they're running yeah. it from ridge road into a catch basin and out and it's a brand new paved road i don't like it and i'm on top of it i've told them but hey you got to have catch bases in reasonable distances. That's not reasonable. You can give me all the technical background you want. It's it's we're talking three thousand square feet of surface area. All right. So we're not gonna. Okay. You know, argue I mean, if you give me here. good evidence, I might change my mind. But I don't. I don't want to hear it now. Okay. The packet's been submitted. So if you want to review it, you can I give you copies. That shows all the computations in the areas. Okay, and, and Derek will probably offer some additional comments on that when it comes back yeah. to weeks from now. You know, I, I think you heard that there's a willingness to make this happen, and, and I think we we're heading that way. Um, just got to get your arms around the conditions that we're looking at. Right.
All right. Next item, actually on to other business. And uh, the first one, 4.1, is a pre-application review. Millennial Living at 170 Ridge Road. Good evening. Got here around 7 because we figured you only had one item on the agenda ahead of us. So I wanted to make sure we didn't miss it. <laughs> uh, sorry. My name is um, uh, Chairman Harley. I'm PZ members and staff. Um, I'm Matt Kaliwa. I'm an attorney with uh, McCullough, Rember, Liebert, and Pierce in Hartford, Connecticut. I represent 170 Ridge Road LLC. Also here tonight, um, Guy LaPlante, who's the principal of the applicant, and Biff Schechinger, who's engineer over here. Um, as this is a pre-application review, we're going to keep it fairly short and sweet. And I hope you'll appreciate that. And look at this as a, a discussion back and forth. We want to learn from you. You want to learn from us. I think that's the, the point of these, um, rather than just a you know, presentation. Um, not that I need to tell you this, but feel free to interrupt at any time with a question or comment. Uh, the property in question, 170 Ridge Road, is a um, two-plus acre site at the corner of Ridge Road and Jordan Lane. It's currently a state-owned property of which the state is trying to divest itself. It, um, if my, my memory serves me correctly, and I rem it's a formerly a school for the blind. I remember as a little kid driving down to the intersection, hearing the buzzers on the on the corners, which no one else in town had. Most recently leased to CCMC as an education facility. Um, it's zoned R1. Uh, property is currently vacant and is slowly becoming a bit of an eyesore. How long has it been vacant? Um, a couple of years. A couple of years. Mm -hmm. yeah. couple of years. Yeah. Um, the economics of the site really don't really lend themselves to someone buying the building to demolish it and develop single family homes for an R1 zone. Um, thus, a change of use for the site is a reasonable proposition. Weathersfield has somewhat of a scarcity of multifamily housing opportunities. We feel that this location at the intersection of two fairly major roads with close proximity to bus line and shopping is ideal for multifamily use. Our application will be to allow conversion of the property to multifamily using the existing building and parking lots. To do this, the property will need to be rezoned to SRD and site permit approval obtained. The intended use is for a market rate multifamily building consisting primarily of one bedroom units. The scope of the project is fairly modest with approximately 30 units being proposed. What's the zoning now? R1. A1. A1. Um, A1, I'm oh, sorry. Oh, it's single family. Correct. Well, my, my apologies. Got a history on that, quick one? Hmm? Quick history on that, why is it still? Why still A1? Yeah. I think I wasn't here when the, well, Peter, I don't know if you can help out here, but it was sort it was of. The school, the schools, no are, okay. schools well, well, are permitted in a residential zone per your zoning regulations. There was no need to rezone it to anything other than that. Histor historically. Historic. Historically, that? yep. Okay. It's always been that way. Okay. The intention then was a single family area there. So uh, even though it's built maybe 50 years or 70 years ago. There's a subdivision surrounding it that I believe that this Parcel was was taken out of this parcel. It was a much bigger estate up there. Back, yeah. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, George. Um, okay. The expected tenant is a person in their 20s or 30s, potentially with a spouse who may be leaving their parents' basement elsewhere in town, or is simply attracted to the town of Weathersfield and who seeks an alternative to purchase or is not yet ready to purchase. The proposed use makes use of the existing building and improvements and will beautify the site. We feel that the intended use is an excellent one for the site and one that adds to the fabric of the town. Finally, the, uh, the master plan that is required to be submitted for an SRT zone includes a number of items to be submitted, and that's part of what we want, we want to talk to you about tonight, um, and which may be waived. The two areas we would ask for a waiver are a, a traffic impact study um, it's not a new development. There's no new building put, being put in. The parking lots are the same size. Don't feel that ne that, would, that would be necessary. And um, the fiscal impact study regarding impact on fire, police, and schools. Um, again, it's not a, new, um, not a new structure going up. No, no new curb cuts, no new 
it's, it's the same site, just a, just a change of use. And um, with mostly, sing, with mostly uh, one bedroom units, we don't feel there's gonna be much of an impact on, on schools. Um, with that, I will turn over to the, um, the pre-applicants, engineer Robert uh, Biff Schackinger, my apologies, who can go through some of the details of the proposed plans. Hi, I'm Biff Scheckinger. I'm a landscape architect, licensed in the state of Connecticut. Uh, won't waste a lot of time. The, Matt has just covered most of it. Uh, we basically looked at the site's steep in section. It's terraced, as you well know. So there's an existing building with an 8,200 square foot uh, footprint. There's an access, uh, accessory building, which is a 1,600 square foot footprint so the, the coverage of the building which we're not expanding any of the buildings the buildings are at 9,000 uh, math is not my strong suit but it's a little over 9,000 square feet it's at 10 a little over 10 percent of the site 35 percent is allowed by coverage but there's no proposal here to expand the, f the coverage of the buildings it's to work within the envelopes the accessory building we're looking at to do a, a with an office for maintenance and storage facility for the residents uh, I, we just got a survey yesterday. We took this from the state survey and field observations, but we just we have an A2T2 survey being completed right now. But it appears that our coverage is pretty much the same. It's been reconfigured. We may even actually have less, but I'm not, I'm, don't hold me to this until I do get the final survey and get to lay it out. The parking areas are roughly the, the same size, roughly the amount of parking. They have uh, 48 striped spaces. We're proposing 51. Uh, the units allowed are 15 per acre. This is a 2.18 acre site, so they're proposing, uh, what's that, 30, 30 units um, at one and a half, 1.5 parking spaces. I think I did the math on the, not like them, on the concept plan wrong. Uh, we have, we're, we're um, that would be 45, I believe, and in which case uh, we're looking at, no, I have to look at the math on that. I thought I came out with 32 units because it, it's over two acres. But either way, we even if we're at the maximum of 32 units, we would have uh, 48 spaces required. We have 51. It breaks down to uh, 48 standard. We have uh, two standard handicap spaces and one standard van handicap space. Uh, there's an already an extensive that, yes. That includes the parking lot that's down below. Yes, one, it's broken between 27 and 20, uh, that's uh, 22. Wait, now that doesn't act, equal 51. I know there's 28, 28 now, there's 27 below, we're looking around 27 below and, and the extra we're picking up on site. Though it's more efficient, of course, right now the, uh, I'm not sure all the striped parking spaces meet town requirements and I certainly don't think that the, uh, the uh, handicapped spaces meet current ADA requirements. Our proposal will re-clarify that and rectify that situation. What's proposed here are all to the town standards for parking as well as the ADA compliance. Uh, also, uh, I told you the coverage is only 10.2%, uh, I think, for the building. The buildings aren't going to be expanded. We have a big activity lawn with a playscape that's already there. That's a 14,600 square foot area here. We're proposing a, a little social garden space for the tenants in here that's another four and a half thousand square feet. That leaves around the, the site itself, we have another 30,500 square feet of, of landscaped area. So the landscaped area total is 52.7% or so, 52.27%. Uh, we're only required to have 35%. Uh, in terms of the parking, we have uh, the requirements, one, st one shade tree per 10 parking spaces, which in this case would be five or six, roughly. If 51 kicks it into six, that's fine. We're proposing around 18, which is a little uh, less than, uh, it's a tree for every three parking spaces. Uh, I didn't do the final landscape configuration around the parking lot, that's a separate calculation because I need it, uh, I've, I've had one very, edifying and, and uh, pleasant conversation with Mr. Gillespie about the, your planner, but I, there are a few things I'm still, have to come in and talk to him about to get all the final interpretation of, I know we have well over the 15% uh, the landscaped area within the parking areas. We also have moved the, the dumpster, which right now backs up onto Jordan Lane in the corner of the upper parking area, and we've moved it to the back here and shielded it appropriately per your regulations, and also it's away from the building. 
the, the area that we had to create that's already paved. Frankly, we're pulling up the pavement in the back side of the building. This area all here is already paved. We're pulling it back to meet the requirements of the 15 feet setback of landscaped area before you have uh, paved parking. And in the back, because we have to get to the, uh, the turning radii for a garbage truck, which is factored in, we have a, um, an area for activity for about half court basketball or something, but it's back away from the building now with that buffer around the building. And also we can cloister the, the dumpster area back away from the building in the center of the site back there as well. There's a, a substantive uh, existing evergreen hedge that's on the adjacent side of the property to the south, and there's two, there's two abutting properties here of residential use. In the center, there's a town open space parcel, and then there's Where one. There's a property here, property here, that's a residential use. This goes into the core of the subdivision. It's a big open space parcel, and that abuts the state parcel right here. And can then there's you town it? Can your people access it out? Everybody can. It's, it's, okay. it's, it's literally an open, open space. No fencing. Okay. And it, it actually is part, it looks visibly as a contiguous piece of the mowing lawn here, but it's, it's open. It's not fenced in or anything. Uh, and then there's a property here that's a residential use on the corner of Jordan Lane. And, and um, so basically we're keeping the envelope the way it is. We're not expanding the buildings. We Eat, we exceed all the requirements for, for coverage and for landscaping on, and that's our intent to provide not only just landscaping, but also some social garden spaces and also some activity spaces for the tenants, and that will be hopefully maybe an adjunct into the town open space. And we're, we're open to you know, working with the town to make this a really functionally and visually spectacular you know, addition to the, to the community and the neighborhood. As Matt was saying, there, there are our, if you look at it in the context of a mile or so around, there's several uh, SRDs. It's within walking distance to a commercial area. The, there's a lot of large open space in the cemetery, then the golf course north of it. It's kind of a transition area in terms of land use. So again, it'd be, it's a nice building. We, I've seen, you can see the architecture we're trying to maintain. And, and the, the base, I believe the building, I can say, is substantively in good shape. And it's been upgraded with the utilities recently and everything. So it's a shame to leave, lose um, a building like this through neglect or demolition when it's really functionally usable and, and it's a structurally sound building and has a visual and historic character for the town. So. Go ahead, George. <laughs> yeah, George. Come on, I haven't talked all night. Go ahead, George. No, you know. I said one. Um, Let's see what they ask. Okay. Uh, what's that back quarter going to be really used for? What is it, just a lawn? Right now it's an activity lawn. What do you mean an activity lawn? Well, there, there's a playscape in there. There's a giant umbrella that, yes. uh, a very actually especially nice umbrella of a large scale for people to, to sit out there on a nice day. Uh, there, there's a, I, I'll let the developer talk, but right now there's, there's been a, it's a fairly recent, you know, segmented um, unit type playscape with some, you know, there's a sand area for uh, impact attenuation, there's uh, seesaws and other equipment. Right now, we we're going to keep it Oh, I, and see if it's functional. I, yeah. I thought you might want to do more. Well, we, well, there's lawn area around it, too, that we can use, you know, people can throw frisbee or kick a soccer ball or something. Because you're looking for advice from us. Yes, you're I am. In there for the preliminary we we weren't going to get it. Uh, How dangerous is the back driveway coming in? That's a steep hill there, you know, mm -hmm. going up to the light. It, is, it, uh, it looks like the grade moderates as it goes further down the lane. I, I'm not sure what the cross slope is at that point. I have, I, like I said, we just got the A2-T2 preliminary survey about 6.30 this evening. I had a chance to go through it. You're asking not to do a traffic study because of maybe the number of units aren't that large? Well, the, the, right now the stripe parking... Also, that would be the kind of thing that would be addressed by maybe a traffic study, but I, I, that's why I'm asking. Um, what do you mean by within one block of a new Connecticut fast track? Where is it, out on the Berlin Turnpike? It's on the block then, it's not yeah, very much. Block. Yeah, but it's across the, yeah. across the street. Oh, okay. I mean, the, 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 purpose, the reason we're saying 
I, mean, I think an, uh, a traffic study would be needed is because, I mean, this building has been occupied before and there's been traffic coming in and out of it, albeit at different times of the day, perhaps, but it's, um, you know, there was, there was a school there and people coming and going and this apartment building coming and going. We didn't think that the traffic impact would be visibly, you know, appreciably different from what, what, what had already been there. I'm not sure you can do much about it, but I, I just wanted to point out that that hill and that light Kind of well controlled with the left turns and stuff, but it still presents problems maybe coming in and out for anybody going in and out. But they're going to be a younger group, so it should be all right. Um, let's see. The, um, okay. Uh, back in here, I don't like that. It's too black. Oh. Okay. We're, we're working on some pretty color elevations right now. Uh, good evening. So, yes. The uh, design review committee will probably have to look at it. And what were you looking at? I would hope that they would look at it. We're aware of that. We're still working on it. it it's going to look much better when you get the color version. I think it's going to be actual color. <laughs> you don't like the dark data look? Uh, <laughs> so, no, that's not what I hear around here. I'm not black like windows. Yeah, so. so, what is that? What was that supposed to be? The the rear? <laughs> that's supposed to be the rear elevation? Yeah, no problem. Uh, uh, take a much better. Better. So, so here it's you know. I mean, the building's already there. So. Right. Yeah, right. Right. I know. I know. So but you're right. You probably will be adding something to it. We're going to try to. We're going to clean up the masonry. I'm not uh, saying you do anything wholesale. I mean, but you might add uh, some trim work or something. Yeah, I need some to, details uh, around the windows and doors and up at the parapet. What are you doing with the end areas? What are they? You lands, uh, outside Stairwells. Stairways? We're going to leave those, clean them up, and uh, make them look as new. They're, they're, yeah, they're nice. They're going to sit out there, maybe? I mean, they potentially they could. It's just a you know, nice outdoor area, nice way to access the building from the parking lot without going around to the front or the back. Yeah, okay. You know, they're in, the concrete's in rough shape, but the uh, steel framework could be salvaged. So, so let's keep in. To me right now, Mr. Let's, let's keep in. Thanks, George. <laughs> let's keep in mind it's a pre application review, so I'm going to give you some thoughts, right? Absolutely. Um, reuse of an existing structure, great, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, We've had a, we've had experiences of scope creep when we have approved zone changes of SRD. Um, you know, we go down this path, <clears throat> we go down this path, and the next thing you know that there's a different proposal after we've changed the zone, right? So, like I said, reuse of an existing structure. The concerns locally are going to be that you're putting in, you know, residential use, you know, uh, Yes, one, fa one, one bedroom sounds really good to me because, you know, we ran into issues up the street with the other uh, SRD uh, w where the community is not all that thrilled with the multiple family stuff and we're sensitive to it. But reuse of a building, if you're keeping it to the skin, who can really argue too much about that? And, and 30 units requiring parking that's very similar to the, you know, the historical use of the properties all sounds good. I'm concerned about what the property could be if it was changed to SRD, could, you know, what is the potential of this site at two acres if in fact it's zoned SRD? Would the proposal be tear it down and now, I've, now I want cost, you know, something completely different, it's either a higher density or some other structure? Because um, those are the things that scare us from, from previous times where we changed the zone. Well, I, I don't know the answers to those. I, could, I, I can't imagine it. the... Um, I mean, the density requirements allow you to put up for two acres approximately 30 units per acre, and right now you can get that in this building. I can't imagine somebody wanting to tear down a perfectly useful building to put, put up something scarier. You still only get 30 units in. Is, is, so, is it 15 the max, or is... Yeah. So for what the, this would be considered a, a mid-rise development, so the maximum um, units per acre, I think, is 15. Uh, if they were to tear it down, do a high-rise, they could go as high as I think 25 units an acre, but as but, as Matt's indicating, 20, yeah. you'd have to do all the demolition and a building of this size. I mean, does it make sense? Need more parking, and then they bump up against lot coverage. Right. So I yeah I don't I don't you probably don't, not a the risk big concern, like but okay. but the part of the SRD process is the zone change with the you know detailed although it's not the final plan 
tied to the, it's tied to the land and you know I mean, the one that worked so well the last time we did it up the street we can always rezone it again on our own initiative so <laughs> lesson learned there but uh, I, I, I think like that's turning that, out pretty well though I so. like the density that's being proposed on use of the old building uh, to me it makes sense there rather than something new high-rise and uh, I, no, that, I, you I know, can't argue we, are, we already said negative things in this area up the street regarding maybe they went we went too far with the elderly housing uh, even though it's lower and you've said that uh, here on May 10th we ought to go look at it and uh, but you know there was a challenge to the single family neighborhood but this is a reasonable density as far as I can see how, how big is how big is a building and, and how big would these 30 units be ish? Uh, most square of footage the wise. square footage wise, they're approaching 600. We're going to, we're going to ask for a little leniency there. Uh, we're hoping to get everything to around 550 square feet per unit. Uh, so here under your requirement. So uh, they, I was going to say, we do actually have requirements, right? And is that it, it is bigger than uh, many other towns. I mean, Farmington, for example, where we've worked is 450 square feet per single unit. Uh, we're still finishing up the hopefully final or you know pl floor plans we're going to submit with our application right now one and twos it's, yeah. it's mostly going to be ones and a couple twos we're still we're still tinkering with this to get the square footage have you been doing any market uh, analysis on that? uh we we have done the market analysis for the mostly single family or single units it's about thirteen hundred dollars a month in rent and we Feel we need at least 32 units in this project to make uh, financial sense. Yeah, and, and the market demand is more for the single units. Um, if there's if there's give on the square footage for the single units, that's quite helpful. Otherwise, it would have to go to more some, a few more two unit bedrooms. That, that, that's correct. Say, two unit so bedroom so units rather. Thanks, Joe, and then Dave. So I guess I'm just. Are there any studios, or is it one bedrooms and two bedrooms? Uh, right now, it's a mix of, uh, there might be a couple of studios in there currently. I don't have it in front of me, but it's mostly one and twos and right now. How many two bedrooms would you estimate? Eight, potentially nine maybe, so uh, on the current plan. Uh, at so, you, the, so you could end up with uh, we're trying 23, to get, 23 ones and nine twos? Ideally, yeah. I mean, less, uh, less two bedrooms, more single units is our intention. And I guess I'm looking at your handout you said that the building is 32,000 square feet so I was doing the math if it's 32 units wouldn't they be an average of a thousand square feet no because we have to take into account for hallways stairwells uh, elevators okay. bathrooms uh, spare rooms we have a couple of rooms in the basement Some social space we were gonna try to put in there okay. a media center or something so um, yeah I guess the, the, the twos have the, raised the potential to getting into other issues and they're also asking not to do a fiscal analysis so I just observe you know I think twos are more conducive to, to families and and cost to the town and so forth so yeah but haven't Joe haven't we been finding even two bedroom units um, don't necessarily add school kids I mean the percentages get pretty low even though I mean, I think I don't know what the fun zone, uh, you know, Borden, it wasn't at a very low figure that they well, I mean, I guess projected we for the air. Don't, don't know. The high end units. I guess we won't know for sure Jeez, until, uh, they, until right. they build it what, what and the, uh, occupy it. What is the rental you said? Uh, that's in it's here, about, about 1300 1250 to 1350 for a single occupancy. And what would the two bedroom rental be? I'd expect those to go to 1650 to 1750. Maybe how, many, how many how many square feet could a two bedroom be? I think I think those are uh, eight hundred square feet plus. Mm -hmm. so just so just for the on the square footage of the units, the the commission does not have the authority to modify the minimums. So the regulations read um, individual unit six hundred square feet. Uh, for, that's for a one bedroom and eight hundred feet for a two bedroom. So. That's why I asked that earlier yeah. on, and uh, just so just make sure those are within your reach. We're, uh, we're working on yeah. that to the best of our ability yeah. with uh, the current shape of the building. It might be a little tight in some areas. 
you know, it's it's a, the location of stairwells and so forth that just kind of box things in. Dave, you had some questions? Yeah, quick question. Um, have you gone through the process of uh, requesting a building use change? Because you're going from a school, what's it presently, it's building use. You're going from a school to a residential, and someone will need to review the use of the existing fire escapes and passage through egress stairs. Uh, our our well, have you? Our I'm, just, I'm just wondering been, if it's gone through the process. Yeah. And it has. It's all been designed to code. Okay. The current code it conforms. Yeah, it's interesting. It, obviously, because of its exist, its previous use, it has uh, very generous corridors, uh, has mm -hmm. internal ramps instead of stairs on, on floor, uh, modest changes on the floors and stuff. It, it's, it's very well laid out and accommodates the lay, easily the code requirements for internal access, egress. But they allow the use of the existing fire escapes and the passage through the there, there's four, stairs. four means of I'm just asking if no, it's yeah, been no, gone through no. there's something you should look into well aside from the elevator and there's several internal stairways plus the external ones I think we, we have more than adequate excess egress points on all floors okay. uh, and and it's a fully sprinkler building also first floor too all four floors okay. On my part, I'm favorably disposed to what you propose, but I have uh, you know, considerable concern with regards to uh, traffic impact, uh, particularly if any of the access uh, or exits out of the property uh, go right onto Jordan Lane, because that hill is is, is very steep at that you know, at that location. And I think you know you're going to have line of sight issues, uh, both for oncoming traffic and and for traffic coming out of the site. Uh, I'm a bit much more uh, uh, sympathetic to uh, exiting off the site onto um, Ridge Road as opposed to uh, Jordan, Jordan Lane. Also, even though the 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 total number of parking spaces may not need to change the traffic configuration That's is going to be uh, considerably different from the kind of school population that was historically in that location and uh, and the traffic that now exists that goes up and down Jordan Lane which is uh, you know it's it's a state highway it, the traffic volume just in the past 10 years I'm just guessing has maybe increased by uh, 25 to 35% at least. But so uh, that's something to be, uh, that, I, that I'm concerned about. Uh, as opposed to also the issue of uh, uh, a zone change, um, you know, it, it'd be great if you'd be able to have uh, some mechanism uh, that our uh, zoning code may allow that would allow you to develop the, the development without having uh, or, or undergoing a, a zone change. You know, the idea possibly of a special exception, but I haven't researched the issue. You know, I'm not, I don't present myself as an authority on that issue at all, but that also may be something uh, that, that you could look into. So, so as you, as you I, said, Tom, it is Tom, a there is, there is no other there's no other zoning mechanism unless they ask for a variance they have to prove hardship I mean very very uh, long road for that so um, our zone our SRD in essence is a floating zone it's historically the only method by which multifamily can occur in town so it is the method that we have um, they do not have another well, alternative the CBA guy says no they didn't intend to do that no no <laughs> so so. They may do other things. All right, that settles that issue. Yeah. Well, it's a steep yeah. lot, so that's the hardship. There you yeah. go. There you go. There you go. It's on a state <laughs> road. <laughs> yeah, I, I do, in, in terms of the traf traffic, this one issue, and it's, it's a valid point, I know, especially as, as, as time has gone by and there has been increased traffic on, on Jordan. It's, it's, the site is right now tightly developed, even though there's a lot of landscaped open space, and it's because it is terraced, and the reason it's terraced is there is a significant drop between the upper and the bottom plateau. I looked 
in several ways to figure out if it could be linked up internally and the amount of damage and, and uh, grading that would take place within the envelope itself, it, it, uh, the, the deleterious effect of that far exceeded the benefit you get because we're still stuck with the confines of the property boundary and as you see, they, at least the bottom parking lot is as far down Jordan Lane as the, as the site will humanly let it be. So that's, I, and I'm sure that was the consideration when they came in on the lower levels to get as far down the hill as possible. I can tell you there's no vegetation or anything to uh, impede any of the site distance there. You have a clear site all the way to the intersection and down the road, but it, it, that's, that's absolutely the only place you can come out on that lower level. So, so, uh, so, it, so it is only the, the, the smaller, lower parking lot that comes out on Jordan Lane where you're concerned about. And that, the, the, and that, the, the upper no, parking that, lot that comes out on Ridge Road. Rate, you know, the concern I expressed to a considerable degree on the materials that you presented to us it looked like the only access out of the site was through that lower level parking area and it would all then dump you know, all of the the traffic onto Jordan Lane but only half the of way it. you've got only you half know, of it now your board hope. set up now it looks like it's only the lower parking that that That's goes correct. onto Jordan Lane the other parking area around the building does go on to or, or can right. uh, exit the traffic on to uh, Ridge Road. So Actually, this, correct. Is a, this is a one-way in loop, so you get you know, people come in here and so kind of turn in, into this area, which is a tight area close to the intersection, so you can a exit here, but, and we're going to, again, we're gonna, as we get the survey, I'll look at because at the way the state had, laid this out, uh, the, the width they showed, and the width I just looked at briefly when I looked at the, ad, the new survey, I can see if the, this will allow two-way traffic. Right now, it can, it, just the width will not allow anything like that. So there's a way we can make this a little safer up top with it, and obviously we have plenty of curb cuts to do it. We, we, that's part of how we'll expand the design. But the, yeah, these two are not interconnected, and so it's only <coughs> the bottom 27 spaces that go out, in and out, access egress on that low point. And I imagine the less desirable spaces are the ones that are going to be further away, too. Visitor park. <laughs> right. That's, no. that's the half a lot per unit. That's right. That's your point five. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and it just strikes me that it, it's basically the same volume of traffic that would have been there when it was a school. It's just it's going in and out at the opposite times of the day as the people right. working there would have been. Or you can look at it where people, if they were dropping off students, they're going in and out and in and out versus somebody going out and then coming in at the end of the day. So. Right. Well, you're the in and out would have been at the, the, the two curb cuts, so that, that wouldn't have been as big a deal. I mean, I, I think if, you know, people living there will figure out which lot they're going to park in and which way they're going to drive to wherever they're going, and it's going to sort itself out basically regardless of what your traffic study shows yeah it is a state route Jordan Lane so uh, you know the state's going to assuming for a moment that you're going to end up reconstructing the pavement you'll yeah. end up having to go to the DOT for a permit to be there and they're gonna make you make sure that it has sight lines in each direction I don't I don't know if I have a strong opinion on whether it needs a traffic study or not I, I as an engineer, I don't think it needs a traffic study, but you're not trying to convince me. You'll be trying to convince the public that may or may not be thrilled with the project, right? So you'll need to decide whether, you, you know, we may, we may or may not care for it, but it may be useful to you to have Tom, it. I think well, I think we are trying to convince you, actually. Hey, Tom, <laughs> DOT ought to chop off the top of the hill and get it out of the way. And then Ridge Road wouldn't well, fit. Tunnel. <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, and Peter can help me out here, it's the commission that can waive these requirements. So I'm not sure if we do that today or as part of the application. I, I, it's important that it be discussed today so right. you know where you're going to go with this. So I heard a couple of different opinions, opinions and I heard a specific concern. So um, they're, they're not going to vote on it. Uh, yep. It's not the format for that. But um, So maybe a couple of other members have to weigh in on that. I just had one question while I'm talking. If I'm reading sure. this plan correctly... Um, it appears that a portion of the property uh, juts out into the Ridge Road. 
No, right another away. one. Right uh, away. We were going to say thing. I was going to say, predicated on past experience very recently. Yes. Well, you highlighted it, room. so I couldn't. I couldn't miss it. So no problem. Uh, <laughs> we're looking at maybe uh, working with the town to alleviate what could be a potential situation because right now you have a new sidewalk and a, a bit of the curve uh, radius as the return going from between at the intersection of Ridge Road and Jordan. So if we could somehow rec you know, make it easy for everyone, including mm -hmm. the town. We're yep. We're more than willing to negotiate. Okay. We the could, idea would be to, I think, take title and then deed it to the town if yeah. the town's willing to take well, it. Well, yeah, we could talk offline yeah. about that. There's a whole right. separate process yeah. if that's if yeah. that's what we wanted to do. But, yeah, I, now would be the time to correct that. Solving that issue. Sure, yeah. sure. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, I, uh, but we could come back in a year if we're provisional on that. <laughs> I guess my thought on the traffic study is that it, it may not have to be an exhaustive, detailed one, but, I, you know, I don't know who will be sitting here when you present the application formally, um, and I think it would probably put people's minds at ease rather than anything else. So I'd, I'd you're saying a small traffic study might be. Well, I mean, we've seen different kinds of traffic studies. I mean, yeah, right. I want one that's, you know, appropriate, legitimate. How about a traffic count or something along those lines, or does it need to be more uh, substantial than that? I mean, we can get DOT maps pretty easily with uh, accurate figures that were probably dated within a year. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that somebody's done there. one, you know, half a mile from here not too long ago. Right. So I don't think it's reinventing all four of the wheels. Right. But if we do that and then we can recalculate for the, for the residential use in terms of peak traffic flow predicated on the size, you know, how many units we have, extrapolate out by 1.5 parking spaces per unit and then change, you know, take it and see how that fits into the, the capacity of the existing, of the adjacent. Yeah, I, I, I don't think they're, you know, you talk to a traffic engineering company that, that does these small little reports and I, you know, if, if you get a reasonable one, they're not going to be charging you an arm and a leg and they're going to put it in perspective. They're going to say there's 30 units and there's 45 spots and, um, yeah, it's just not much to the background. Will the report have the data from DOT that says, well, there's 1,200 vehicles on Jordan Lane? Yes, and it'll have the 600 on Ridge Road. Um, and then they'll, it'll make a statement, and it's insignificant with the, 20, with the 30 spots and the 60 trips generated from those 30, you know, that this is an insignificant. I just wrote it for you. That's what a traffic engineer is going to tell you. But, again, it's, it's you know, it's... You're not convincing me. It's the making the public comfortable that's going to be living in the in the area, right? From someone who's an expert. Your point well taken. Yeah. Okay. Except that the, the, the commission the commission does need to waive the requirement of these of these. I, I guess what we're suggesting is why why are you asking me? There's no standard. Oh, no, okay. no, no, I, I hear you. I'm just saying. There's no standard to the yeah. There's no standard for the traffic impact study. It just references a document. Okay. Uh, the scope of that we can talk about offline and the fiscal impact study is that something well that i think there's also levels of fiscal impact study i think you know the, the question you, you heard from one member that you know we've been through this with a couple of recent projects who we realize the impacts to the schools is is pretty minimal i think you can probably summarize that in you know a, a short analysis um without going through a whole full-blown impact analysis. So uh, once again, I think it's the same message as the traffic study on the fiscal impact, and it's best that you include it with your application. And once again, it doesn't have to be terribly exhaustive based yeah. on some recent work that's been done. Yeah, I mean, pretty much everybody uses that Rutgers survey. Right. I'll say 30 units, you'll have one right. kid if you're lucky. And uh, all, that, all those reports are public record, and be happy to share them with you. Thank you. We have to answer questions to the no, public. No well. problem. You're talking about the, the project down Ridge Road a little bit, right? Yep. Okay. Well, yeah. Um, I mean, is there anything is there anything else that the commission likes to see? Uh, you know, that any feedback on on what you'd like to see lighting, 
landscaping, you know, so, you name so it. I don't, I don't know if it's special. It's, you, you know, you're going to put together a proposal that puts all those things on the title sheet, your calculations for parking, your calculations for the landscape. And, you know, it's a, it's a nice site. I'm sure you can meet all the requirements. I can't imagine that you'll have a problem meeting landscaping, the lighting, hooded, that kind of stuff. Uh, sure. I can imagine it'll be reasonably simple. Right? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if, whether there's lighting in the lower parking lot, but since it's, you know, a nighttime use rather than a daytime use, you might want to take a look at what there's there and just not have it shine on the neighbors. Right. They can yeah. shine on the neighbors. That's right. Because right. yeah, we yeah, have... It's got to stay on your side. It's new, so it's you got know, to meet the lighting regulations. Are, are these yeah. folks... Are, are you folks, you know, interested in this project? So, you know, if you've got something to say, you're welcome to join. It's not a public hearing, but, you know, it's a discussion. And if you've Might got have something. Asked, one, ask one more question? No, um, I noticed on the site plan there's no HVAC units. I take it they're all going on the roof? And windows. So will there be a no any noise issues? Or uh, there, sh there shouldn't be any noise is any issues. We're going to leave that to the MEP. Uh, okay. More than I likely. See, I see the building getting taller. I mean, the, you know, is. a three-foot con condensing unit on a roof possibly, but you also have a pretty high parapet up there. Okay. If That's they're up there, it's going to be limited visibility. It won't be 30 window units? Wow. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you can go to the high school and look at what we've proved for <laughs> no. I mean, it's got an existing <laughs> heating system already. So, you know, we'll try to keep it aesthetically pleasing. I mean, personally, I'd rather see mini splits, but you know, we don't we don't want to uh, degrade the property too much. Yeah. These would all be market rents. There wouldn't be any subsidized housing or affordable. Um, no, uh, I mean, if this now. building was in Hartford, yeah, we'd probably go subsidized or New Britain. But in Weathersfield, we don't really see a need to. Market rents. It's a great town. People want to be there. When do you anticipate coming back to us? Uh, as soon as possible, hopefully, uh, more than likely by the 17th. Okay. Next meeting? No, 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 time to notice it, probably. Probably not. Probably meeting well, after that. Hmm. All right. Sorry, I misspoke. I'm sorry. Then. <laughs> <laughs> the following meeting. <laughs> Did you have something you'd want to... Is this a new term? Does Jeez, I can't get to you. living? Of course. Uh, unfortunately. <laughs> I mean, I know what millennials are, but I never Sorry, I'd come into our... It just seems like a good good fit for the project, you know. It's right now by the bus station, <laughs> close to Aetna. Did you have something that you'd like to throw at us? Go ahead. Um, sure. You know, I wouldn't worry too much about this. It's a term that's a little uh, expiring. Concerns are: does Weathersfield need more market rate apartments? I've added up the Hydro Borden. understand there was a study that was done for the board and that said there needed to be about 600 or there was a demand for about 600 market mm -hmm. rate apartments in the general area and I don't know if that means that they need to be in Weathersfield. Uh, I don't know if that's the best use for the building. I was very concerned about traffic on Ridge Road for the previous, previously approved project. Uh, there was a traffic study that said it's insignificant, it's not going to contribute, yet everybody in town knows that the intersection at Knott and Ridge was a problem before the project got approved. So now you're dumping more cars into a already existing problem and it sounds from the feedback that I'm hearing from the commission that uh, sounds like a good project and uh, doesn't really warrant any kind of significant traffic study. Um, also the economic impact of the additional units. Uh, every time we hear a study it's like it doesn't generate any children. It doesn't generate any traffic. Yet this will be the third project on the table that isn't proven. They're all just on paper. We don't really know that the board won't generate problems 
or the Ridge Road project won't generate problems. It's all based on studies. And granted, the experts should know what they're talking about, but we haven't experienced what that is. Now you're, you might be throwing another 30 units into an already problematic condition. Thank you. Can we have his so, state his name? Mr. Chair, can we have yeah, state his name? Fair, and, fair enough. Tom, Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walcott Hill Road. Tom, Tom Mazzarella, right? It's M. Mazzarella, 600 Walcott. Thank you. And the gentleman with the plaid shirt, can he also tell us who he is? Uh, Guy LaPlante, uh, 170 Ridge Road, LLC. Thank you. Thanks. <clears throat> is there anybody else who'd like to? Who are you? <laughs> are, are you folks interested in saying anything about this and adding at this point in time? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. We are waiting for to talk to you about bike walk. What's the scale of bike walk? Fair. You're talking about biking and walking and wondering whether this is a millennial project, whether you have any kind of thought about bicycle facilities, street parking, you know, the track of people who look at a bike work. I mean, I think a bike rack on a property would be great. I know all the fast track buses have uh, bikes and we're not expecting all the tenants to have vehicles being that, you know, the new generation is what it's targeting. So yeah, I think that's a great idea. Thanks. Okay, so um, you heard a lot of, uh, you know, openness, I think, to the idea. I, I think you ought to <coughs> um, do the studies that are called for. Uh, at the appropriate levels. Um, I'm glad there is a neighbor here because it, you know, it kind of implies what we were saying, you know, that there are people who aren't gonna like the idea um, and, and are gonna challenge you. It was a facility that had 30 spots, and that's why I say, you know, within the skin, it's, you know, it is pretty straightforward that the traffic doesn't change much when people come and go, you know, is, is, a, is an issue. Um, Got it. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank All right. you. Have a good evening. Thank you. All right. Next next item on the agenda. Bike walk. Come see us. Four point two. All right. Now you've waited two hours and three quarters, and now you're not going to come up. Thank you. Yeah, we're going to make you stand up. <laughs> Thank you. you guys uh, I'm Kevin Sullivan from 79 Wright Road. And I'm Bravo Connor, 180 Main Street. We weren't sure if you were going to have a discussion amongst yourselves about the offer that we sent in or, or whether you wanted us to say something about it first. Uh, we're, we're happy to. Why don't, you, why don't you initiate it by, you know, verbalizing sure. the offer? Well, uh, I guess just to uh, briefly restate uh, or more briefly restate what's what's in the uh, uh, the le letter that we sent in uh, we are a new group we wanted to introduce ourselves um, we are called bike walk Weathersfield uh, we're modeled after a statewide organization with a similar name bike walk Connecticut uh, we are very supportive of, excuse me supportive of safe and healthy bicycling and pedestrian activities in Weathersfield um, we like to tr try to take a collaborative approach and, a, and an open approach, so we wanted to try to open a dialogue with town government. Um, we are familiar with the uh, town's plan of conservation and development and know that it uh, speaks to uh, future development of uh, bicycling and pedestrian plans, potentially, uh, and we do have some, uh, if we're not being totally overly presumptuous, we do have some experience uh, that we can offer to the town with some assistance if the town would like it in developing uh, a bike and pedestrian plan. Um, so we wanted to offer to do that and uh, just have a conversation about how that might occur if, uh, if that made sense for the town. All right, thank you. 
So I, you know, I'm personally aware that you know many towns have it because when I was working with DOT, it was part of the process we needed to, you know, uh, refer to it and and work with the towns to make sure that we were consistent with any bike ped plan that they might have. Uh, I'm a, I, I take it Weathersfield doesn't have one. I, I I know it's in their conservation. So help sure. help us understand what we do have already. So uh, we do not have a, an official bicycle and pedestrian plan. We've um, got various recommendations and different documents, but there's no uh, overall comprehensive uh, bicycle and pedestrian plan, uh, so to speak. We have not had uh, any groups knocking on our door asking to initiate that kind of a, a, a plan. So we, we are uh, very welcoming of uh, this particular uh, offer. Um, and we wanted to, uh, we, you know, it would be done within, if we do it, we will be done within the guise of implementing the plan of conservation and development, which would fall under uh, this commission. Uh, I know you guys haven't, uh, since we did the plan of development, we haven't been doing a lot of planning uh, as it relates to this, but the plan of development does recommend that we initiate uh, an endeavor such as this. Um, and typically we would form some sort of, a, you know, group of stakeholders or you know uh, uh, players uh, in that process from across the community that's the typical way that we would do that there are uh, a number of model documents out there from other towns uh, there's there's guidance out there from other towns so we would probably um, not reinvent the wheel um, you know take advantage of some of those other efforts uh, we would work uh, also collaboratively with some of our surrounding towns to make sure the network that we come up with works with those towns. So those are the, some of the things that we would probably uh, want to do in order to initiate uh, an effort like this. So, um, you know, from my perspective, I uh, welcome um, the assistance because otherwise it would be left to me to do so. Um, and, we, and we know how far it's gotten since the that's correct. You know, I've been well. working hard on it. So. Uh, uh, so, so, so what kind of additional detail would we expect to see in such a document that we didn't already have in the plan of conservation and development? Because that had primary corridors and such defined. It does, but I don't think it, it, w it was given the analysis and the specificity that uh, a document uh, such as this really needs uh, to get uh, potential access to funding. Um, you know, it hasn't. You know, that document is, is very, um, those recommendations are very generic and sort of rudimentary, uh, whereas I would expect a much more detailed um, document that has <coughs> been vetted by, you know, the neighborhoods that might be impacted by it. Not to say, you know, people would necessarily be against it, but we did, we did hear at a council meeting uh, not that long ago that there was a, a bicycle crossing sign put up in that particular resident. Oh. Didn't, didn't like it so there's so those are the so the, you know there's a process there's a lot of detail um you know it might it would have recommendations potentially for new ordinances and things like that um so <clears throat> uh you know i don't want to prejudge what would be in the document but it would be a lot more detailed and uh um you know would would have a great much much more uh community input you know so that's kind of so the di difference between what we have now and, and what we really should have so what did you guys have in mind in terms of um, um, providing the manpower to get such a document done? Uh, have you been involved with efforts in other towns prior to this? That's what I thought I was gathering. And, and is it something that you have participated in um, a, if, with towns with hired consultants to write it for you or to have you guys written it for the towns and provided the muscle, the manpower? Uh, this, uh, you asked a meatball kind of a question for Rob. <laughs> uh, Rob, and, uh, why don't you just tell him? Yeah, <laughs> and I, I'm a one-year uh, Weathersfield resident, but I, moved, I lived in South Windsor for 20 years, and I was on <clears throat> um, the, uh, what's called at South Windsor Walk of Wheelways, a group form like this. We, we, we took members from the community, and we were, um, uh, subcommittee of the Park and Rec Commission, but did basically the same kind of things Peter was talking about. And <clears throat> the document we had we had a great collaborative effort with all the town, including the P and Z. And we were actually when they did the conservation development plan, we helped you know put together the community members to kind of come and tell the community what they wanted to see more walking and biking, and. Um, we looked at the things like complete streets that would have feedback for policies for planning and zoning, 
and worked with the planning department and we tried to join you know bike walk connecticut and we went to the Krog meetings and um, it was basically 10 people from the community all with different um, different walks of life and different inputs but um, one of the things we also did when we <coughs> started our group simsbury was the only bicycle friendly community which is the designation the national designation by the american league of bicyclists and we set out a goal that, you know, to be number two. And we wanted to be number one, but it was too late. And we did that. We got um, one of the things to, and that's in, in, this, in the Weathersfield uh, plan to apply for bicycle friendly community. I did that for South Windsor for all three years. But the first year you do it, um, the American League of Bicyclists gives you feedback. Like you ask, here's what we have, and they tell you, here's what a bicycle friendly community would look like. My experience moving from South Windsor is like Weathersfield should have that status already, and it's like it just takes somebody to do the application. Um, but that's like how many miles you have of walking, whether you have bike ed in the schools. It's a very comprehensive list, and there's a lot of check marks that our town should have here. And, um, and it's you know some prestige, but some some of it translates into tourism and commerce and how. Um, when you build homes, you know, whether people want to come and to talk about millennials that they're showing they want to come to places where they can bike and walk. And so the, that was a long answer to this probably short question, but. <laughs> did you get to be number two? We did get to be number two. We actually, we, we got bicycles. <laughs> it was a goal. I didn't hear what you achieved. <laughs> and we actually went out, like our group went out and bought a fleet of 25 bicycles. And then we got the Board of Education to adopt bicycle education into the school system. So at South Windsor, um, instead of PE for a week, every fourth grader gets a helmet and gets a, a week-long bike training, bicycle um, safety, and then goes out on the road. Some of us went and got certified as instructors just to kind of take the financial burden off the town. And basically, it was, it was all volunteer effort, so. So, so uh, what's your thought, you know, you, you actually suggested that you would like help. Is it, is this a is that subcommittee? Is that you, seem, you seem shocked. Um, no, um, actually where I'm going is organizationally within the town of Wethersfield, is it appropriately something that, you know, it, it's being presented to the planning and zoning? Is that the right place through the planner or is it? So, as I say, I think there's diff different, you know, models. gloves and hands that, you know, so I, I mean, it's in the plan of development. It's already a recommendation that we do this. That was my initial uh, reaction that uh, we do it under whether it's a subcommittee of planning and zoning that, you know, I I'm the staff and you know they they help coordinate it um, and then you know bring it back at intervals to give progress reports and then at the end of the day have it ha have it either approved as part amended part of the plan of development or do it as some other separate uh, but give it some official uh, endorsement uh, at the end of the day so that it carries you know a little bit of weight as we go forward with potential grants or projects and, and such so and it, <coughs> my first reaction is um, those that are initiating the effort need to be realistic and think that it's going to be done without a consultant because the town doesn't really have that money, right? So yeah. it's hard work. That's right. Yeah. My, I'm not sure precisely what they're proposing it is sort of the, the vagueness of it, um, whether they're proposing to be, you know, an arm of this commission or to act in the same you know, in the same shoes as the consulting firm that we did, that we engaged for uh, helping us to develop the, you know, the, the latest the plan of uh, uh, conservation I, development. I, I would equate it to like the sign subcommittee that you know we recently put together, which has design review members, planning and zoning members, it has a chamber of commerce member, but on a bigger, you know, more comprehensive scale with more more stakeholders so and the product that would come out of this would be a document that would you know would be proposed as as a potential attachment or addendum to i'd have to think about that um you know there's a whole process we would have to go through for amending the plan of conservation and development so maybe something short of that uh, but officially you know being uh, being approved by whether it's us or council or some other entity um I, you know i think maybe the next steps was i could sit down with these guys we could kind of put together a scope of service you know maybe who's going to be involved how long it might take what are the you know basic elements of it and as, as i say we wouldn't reinvent the wheel there's plenty of good models out there i think that could be put together uh, pretty quickly i i would think that membership somebody from planning and zoning you know uh, should 
participate in that it, as we start going through that process. But I think we can come back and uh, you know give you kind of a more uh, more of a skeletal outline of of what we're thinking about without a lot of a lot of work. And I think this can be done primarily on a volunteer uh, basis um, and and turn out to be a pretty good good document. Uh, Since when do you need to be called the I'm glad to see these guys. Uh, I'm not a biker. I'm not, ha not a very good walker. But I'm about ready to come down to the council meeting one of these nights and say to them, <coughs> and even the people running for office, uh, what are we doing about our sidewalks? We have no sidewalk program. Uh, I, I got up and ranted and raved here last spring, and the, my fellow commissioners here were wondering what got into me about uh, the need for sidewalks. Next thing I know, they inspected a section of my street in front of my <laughs> house. You <laughs> 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 you know, because I ranted and raved about old Leathersfield getting paid with George, I'm not responsible for that, just for the record. <laughs> yes, so. I haven't seen a new sidewalk except my next door. We decided to have our friend down in uh, Elm Street come up and do his the other day, and I had him do a piece of my front walk, but uh, seriously, uh, this is a serious matter, and uh, we have a very poor, and I don't mean to blame a planner. I'm, I'm not the sidewalk guy, so. Last plan, but I think it's a very weak plan, and you see in the press everywhere in the state the Simsbury bike and rail trails and how they're connecting them up. Mm -hmm. Everybody's into that, and the younger generations are doing it. And they, they, won't, they don't even want sidewalks. I, I'm going to recommend the town rip out our sidewalks because people tend to uh, walk in the street now. But they're walking, and they want to bike and do other things, and it's not being done here, and this town needs to get with it. And I think that's one of the benefits of doing a plan like this. It raises the profile of those things, points out areas that need uh, improvement, and then hopefully action will right. come out and of that. Rocky Hill actually provides sidewalks free to the everybody in town. Did you, did you know that they do that? I, I did not know that. Free sidewalks? Until recently I was told that. In fact, uh, our friend down on, uh, you know, who did our sidewalks here, don't, uh, you know, down on uh, Elm Street, he said, yeah, he lost a contract down there this year because, of course, they're anxious with the state legislative situation, and uh, they, they dumped his contract for doing sidewalks in, in Rocky Hill. Okay. And somebody calls in and wants a piece of sidewalk done, they get it done. I, it's probably the only town that does it. I don't know how they can afford it, but hey, this is a serious matter, and I'm glad to see these guys here and something getting started. Now, whether you want to do when do we have to do our full plan of development is one of my questions. Uh, we have, uh, what was it, 2013, so we've got Ten some, years. some time. Don't yeah, rush okay. it, George. No, right. then this don't, don't, five, don't rush it. We're down to five. Actually, you got to start next year, don't you? It's a separate piece. It doesn't have <laughs> to be part of the plan. It can be amended to it, as you just said. And that's not a good idea. I mean, I would think th this effort that they're going to lead uh, is not going to take multiple right. years. It's going to be Let's a shorter time. you can get a grant, and uh, that would be helpful, and or get the manager to put the little something in the budget if the state all of a sudden gets... Nice Adopts the budget, you mean? Rich, yeah. Mr. Chairman, I want to just thank these two gentlemen for Champion Bike Walk Weathersfield. I agree with George, and your challenge would be to get George on a bike. <laughs> yeah, right. we'll take I think it'd be good for him. We'll George needs out. a good bike. He's walking. Hey, it's enough. never. It's no, not just for the young. I mean, to see them here. Kevin and I both are, you know, of a certain age, and both bike to work in Hartford, and yeah. I did it from South yeah. Windsor, and it's it really is no never. And, and they have they have four wheel and three wheel bikes too, so you don't have to balance anymore. So it's just. Matter of pedaling, but the 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 facilities and the um, I live on Main Street, and that's where we moved into. But to watch people walk, I mean, it's a it's a it's a part of the town that's like a um, it's an asset. You know, it's an asset for people coming in to see it because you it attracted me to move here. I mean, I was like, I want to be where I can walk out of my house and and walk and not pop into a car and then go to a, and then go to a park and walk and come back. So it's really like um, I think it is a valuable asset to the community. So bring it on. Thank you. Thanks. Rich. Yeah, I'm not sure I remember what it was I wanted to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I'm supportive of this, and I, I think, you know, just so that we have a context, I agree with what Peter seemed to be saying, <clears throat> which is, you know, we have the plan of conservation and development, and in the back of it, we have a whole bunch of kind of steps and action items and implementations and 
you know, frankly, between lack of time, lack of staff and staff and lack of money, you know, we haven't really pursued any of them, but I think this is a good place to start and it might be a good sort of model for picking up and identifying other parts of the plan of conservation and development that maybe could be fulfilled by, you know, either members of the commission, members of existing boards and commissions, or just the general public, you know, who might have an interest in a particular area. It doesn't need to amend the plan of conservation and development. It just, you know, flows from the recommendations in it. And, you know, the, the last two pages of this are sort of self-explanatory as far as, you know, what the tasks are and what the objectives are, and if they want to fulfill those and then go beyond them, you know, great. And it, you know, frankly, might remind us or spur us on to take a look at that and, you know, blow the dust off and see which other things we might want to have, you know, somebody else try to implement that, you know, um, deals with aspects of the plan that are more relevant than others. I mean, some of them are just kind of mundane, but others, you know, may be a way to generate active community engagement you know, which is a double-edged sword, but I think, you know, the... It's generally for the good. The enthusiasm is out there, and, and right, true, you know, right. to try to, you know, put it into the appropriate context might be might be a good way to go. That's a positive reaction, gentlemen. <laughs> if you guys have to stay <laughs> up this late, clarifying. we appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, do you have to wear a blue shirt to be in oh, the bike yeah. the group? We have our, our logos underneath. <laughs> 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 That's our, that's our, so our shall we color. just leave this? You, you got a you know positive response, and just leave it to you to coordinate with these gentlemen and see where it goes. Okay. Probably Is there any way that sections can be enforced to be installed now. I'm um, I'm sure you know the answer to how and it's also, rather ad hoc. And also, how does it apply to town-owned sidewalks? There's a section of concern that I had at the high school where the the uh, sidewalks end at the last resident. And then when you hit the high school property, at one time it was paved and then it turns into grass. So do we have, <clears throat> so many towns have sidewalk plans associated with the schools. Um, and that was, you know, they didn't go so far as to be town-wide, walkability, bikeability, but they started with the, with the schools. That's my recollection historically. Safe routes to schools. Uh, that's the DOT mm -hmm. and, uh, and the funding mechanism to make those happen, right? But um, towns had the <clears throat> sidewalk plans. Does Weathersfield have a sidewalk plan, per se? Yeah, I think I remember looking at one, and it recognized where the gaps were, and then there were the, you know, bright red where we want, you know, where it was a high priority yeah. to put it, and then it was kind of dim red and orange. And so isn't that in the plan of conservation and development? And then... I think it was in the last one. In the last one? So... So I, I think the answer is, you know, the, the town has these basic and they may be dated plans, but if they, you know, and, and within the limits of the funding that they get every year in the capital program, it's actually part of the capital program, right? It's funding for sidewalks and the like. And so to the extent that public works, am my answer, maybe I should just be like, no, you're, you're answering, I, right? I'll interrupt you if you were. <clears throat> to the extent that public works has funding and it goes through the whole priority process every year about where the capital budget's going to be spent and i you know i imagine there's some little small piece you may not notice it because it's that small somewhere got done this year 
but it may not be any place that you see it. Fair enough? Yes. I guess, you know, and, and to kind of go back to the first part, how did there end up being so many gaps? I think part of it is that, you know, big chunks of the town were developed before these requirements were put into place. Um, you know, I, I don't think it was a general requirement probably until the 70s, and most parts of town, at least in parts, had been developed after that. And, and I guess the other thing, too, is aside from the lack of funding to put in new sidewalks where none exist, um, I think the last two or three times the town has proposed to put in sidewalks. Near school. You know, like Mapleside Drive, you know, the, every, you know everybody's hair cut on fire because they didn't want to have the sidewalks. You know, I'm going to have to shovel it now. I'm going to have to maintain this now. Um, two rod, they were putting them out there because there weren't any, and it, it was, you know, it was like a, you know, a national incident, you know, to argue about which side of the street the, the sidewalks were going on, and, and you know, it, it's like as much as people want to have it for walkability and connectiveness and so forth, you know, the, the property owners kind of flip out at the idea of having to maintain it, and, and they also... Yeah, that's all object more strenuously when they're being asked to pay for some or all of it because I think you know recognizing that we don't have a lot of money in the capital budget to do it you know it, it was sort of a, a benefit assessment levied against people and I think you know that was that was tried on Morrison Avenue and you know it kind of got to be let's make a deal of you know how little anybody was willing to pay for the new sidewalks so um, you know, it's it's unfortunately inconsistent and you know driven in large part by having to figure out how to pay for it. Who knew the politics of sidewalk? So where, where does a town resident direct their request? Is it through the annual capital the annual capital improvement program? Annual capital budget. Annual capital budget. Town engineer oversees that process, so if you'd speak with him, he's the good, he's the best person to start with. Yes, the guy was here tonight. Yeah. Thanks. So in wrapping this up, leaving it with you. Thank you. Work with these gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. It helps. Get you moving. I think it will. I hope I it helps. Enjoy your Get us moving. I don't even bike a Absolutely. Walk. All are welcome, and we do. We do. We we've, we've sort of preliminarily. I don't know. Maybe we're about a year or when we whatever we official Imagine. form. But yeah. well, there there's a big. Um, we have a hundred and something people on our Facebook page, and we've been kind of getting the masses together to to attack. So this is our <laughs> our our frontal. But, but there is. <laughs> thank you. Right, but thank thanks you very much. much. Thank, you. thank you. Looking forward to it. Item 4.3, a discussion <clears throat> in the spirit of getting you guys out of here um, oh, in yes. a reasonable time. I, since we are uh, going to be taking up the uh, public hearing matter at the next meeting, uh, I will um, we'll, t we'll take this up at, at that point. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. If you guys are okay with that. Great, idea. thank you. The Yankees are winning. Let's go. Wait, what? The Yankees are winning. Oh, Has that started? They're yeah. still playing. It's one game. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, one game. game. I just, I just uh, thank <laughs> Peter for putting this on for another agenda item. You're welcome. It, but I didn't hear the future, future meeting. I didn't hear the appropriate motion that follows that. <laughs> so move. <laughs> <laughs> I move to continue this to another meeting. Uh, it's, okay. No, it's to to close the <laughs> close the meeting. Close the meeting. Would somebody please make a motion to adjourn the meeting? I'll make a motion. Oh, what about the uh, minutes? Do we have any Second. more? Oh, the minutes? The, min the, minutes, were, the uh, minutes just, um, the minutes don't act. I, yeah. I think you might be missing <laughs> missing page, missing pages, and I think <clears throat> this. Yeah, it seemed odd. Why don't you table that to the next meeting? We'll get you a proper proper set. I didn't read all of the minutes because they weren't there. Well, the ones that so were emailed were correct. <laughs> no, no. Just the ones that were printed were wrong. Yeah, the uh, item, um, the Berlin Turnpike, the package store up there, I don't I don't think the actual minutes reflected the, all of the conditions, so I wouldn't want you to approve them until we check that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. Do we need to worry about also the Also, some of the, vote, the votes that were taken didn't uh, 
correspond to the membership that was oh. in attendance. Okay, we'll have to look at that too then. Yeah. All right, well, once you table the minutes and I'll, I'll take another look at them. I'm glad I wasn't here. What about this? Yeah, just I want to make sure everyone, anyone, if anyone wants to go to that. So on... Um, yeah, there's, everybody wants to go to that. There's Land Use Academy advanced training on the 4th of November at the Middlesex County Extension Office in Haddam. Um, even with our budget restraints, if anyone wants to go, we can probably uh, pull the cash together for that. It's is this the all day one? Yeah, look, yeah, yeah it's the all all day one with an all star with an all star cast of uh, presenters, yeah, Rich Roberts is on including the cast. Rich Roberts. Oh, so, if, so if anyone wants to attend, let me know, and we we can make the uh, appropriate arrangements. So um, it's a Saturday, I think, right? Right. <coughs> Motion made, Mr. Chair. You want Thank to go, you. Tom? Second. You go? Okay. And we have a second. All those in favor say aye. Send me an email to remind Aye. 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 Anybody uh, opposed to adjourning? Written no. Okay. 10, 12. I think that's eight positives for adjournment. Good evening, gentlemen. You guys are just having some good My last two. The Yankees are in a one game playoff. I didn't know. But they wouldn't hurt you.